good afternoon all of you this is nana and then i am going to conduct this short and sweet uh, what happens a presentation or a training sort of a thing on a p2p life cycle as well as a o2c life cycle actually so we are going to begin now and then we will be beginning the session with the enterprise structure creation actually and we will be getting a new enterprise and then upon which what happens we will be setting up the procurement as well as what happens we will now see the transactions and the setup of transactions on this for a simple p2p operation as such right, let me go there and then share my screen now So now what I'm going to do is I'll be logging on with this one now. Fine, since you all have the whatever the URL, I'll be logging in with the a02.emp. Fine, a02.emp. The password is welcome one two three. All are small letters. Fine. Welcome one two three, and then all are small letters. So a02.emp, and then the password is welcome one two three. All are small letters. Fine, which I'm logging in. Now. Fine, look at click on sign. I'm signing in. So in the meantime, what happens? I'll now go on and open up my uh, this thing now. <coughs> I will now open up the institution procurement. Actually, I have two uh, sets of document which I have given to uh, some of you now. Fine, please uh, take uh, this uh, documentation from your colleagues. Actually, fine, they are all having it as such. You know, those who are not having the documentation, please take it from your colleagues. Actually, so I go to the institution procurement, and then whenever you have any doubt, what happens? You please stop me and then ask me. So that what happens? I will be able to clarify your doubts now because the session is slightly fast-paced actually, and then uh, ask me whenever you have any doubts. Actually. Here in which what happens? You have one uh, documentation called the procurement worksheet. Actually, my procurement worksheet. So on which what happens? You are going to see this now. So procurement worksheet. I am opening it up now. So let me open up the procurement worksheet. So you are as alone in it now. So we are going to go as per this now. So here what happens? I will now first of all create an implementation user now. And as per the supply chain is concerned. What happens? A user which is created via managed users are only eligible for all the supply chain transactions actually. And so, what happens? You should not use any other things because certain transactions will go through and then certain will not go through. And so, what happens? Do not create any users via security console. Security console don't create, it. and then always use via managed users. No, I am not going to use. I have already logged in on this. No, uh, and then what happens? These roles also I have already given a lot of roles for them. I am now just leaving it as such. No, Next is what configure offerings. So configure offerings. The next topic of Android will now configure the offerings. So you go there, click on it, and then go to the setup and maintenance now. Fine. Go to the setup and maintenance. <clears throat> setup and maintenance. And then here, what happens? I go to the configure offerings now. So go to actions, and then go to configure offering. Go to offerings now. Fine. Go to offerings. And then let me choose the procurement now. I click on the procurement. So you choose the procurement. The first activity is what you go there, and then choose the procurement over here now. Where is the tier? It is there. I click on the procurement. So once when you see the procurement, what happens? You can now see the new features which are there on the right hand side. If I click on the new features, it will now show you the new features over here. So new features are shown over here. Right? So so many new features are there. Always have a look at it, and then what happens? Keep yourself updated of whatever has come in the new one now. Right? Every version is now. This is a 90A version now, and so that what happens? We'll be having all the new features, and then note down all those new features. And then afterwards, what happens? You click on the opt-in features, and then in the opt-in features. You please enable each and everything. Whether you are going to use it or not, it doesn't matter. Fine, please enable everything, and then uh, that will be uh, uh, what happens very helpful for you later on. I mean, some certain features are required. What happens? Maybe possible going go there. So see that you are enabling everything. You are enabling everything, and then against which what happens? You go to the procurement and then click on the features now. Fine, go there. So you want click on features, and then it may even have some sub features basically. Fine, those sub features also you please enable it. <coughs> <coughs> So, so many sub features are available here. Fine, enable everything. Fine, uh, requisitions, master items. Fine, each and everything you just enable. So, just by enabling, it doesn't mean that whatever they are going to use it. No, fine, but whatever that later time when you want to use it, if it is enabled, it will always be good. So, this is on the configure offerings. And then afterwards, what happens is whenever you are implementing any new module, what you have to do is you have to download all the PDF files or the XML files, and then start to read those things. No, fine, it will give you a lot of information for you now. You can even read up to your retirement. Actually, find that much of information is available over here in the main page, and, but nobody normally reads it now. That's a different thing now. Right? <clears throat> so if you go there, if you click on a particular offering, what happens? You can see the related documents are there. Find expand it. It will not show you what are what are the associated features, what are the set of tasks, all these things are there as a PDF and HTML files. You can download and then you can read. Right? That will now give you a full uh, uh, what happens uh, the features of this. So that's the first one, and then afterwards, what happens? You can now design your own way of implementation. Actually. So in every project, what happens? They try to create one such worksheet now. So then, what happens? This is a generic worksheet, and then what happens? You can create your own. That is the best thing now. 
and accordingly decide what you want to do. The next one is implementation project. Now it's totally bypassed. It's not required at all. Nowadays it's not required. So there is no need to create the implementation project at all. The next one is manage HCM information. Fine, go there. Manage enterprise HCM information. The one I'll not take copy with it. I'll go there. Go to the place and then put the task. Click on it. I will not go to the search and then place the task over here now and then I will not execute the task. Paste it over here now. Take a copy of it. Enterprise HCM information is the one. I click on it now and go here. If you are implementing procurement, what happens? This is normally maintained only with the financial team or otherwise what happens? The project team or HCM team actually. You will not be touching it actually. Supply chain team will not be touching this part at all. And I will now simply go and correct it. Now I will not go for a correct. Correct is nothing but what happens? The record gets corrected. If you go for an update, what happens? There will be a new version of a record which will be created. Version zero, version one, version two. So then, what happens? You can even at a later time, what happens? You can even take a report on how many versions have been created, how the progression has happened in each and every version. Actually, my update is for what? A new version of a record. Correction is what? The same record gets corrected into the same future, like what we have in EBS. So click on correct now. <clears throat> I'm not going to correct it. And then here, I'm just correcting it only for showing it to you. Fine, go there. And the enterprise can have only one one name in the top. It will not be having much of multiple names. Now. You put the name and address of property over here now and go down. And then as far as procurement is concerned, what happens is there are three things, are, these are all very important. The initial person, the number you have to give it, no, fine. the employee when you're creating it, what happens, this will be starting on 1,000, And then afterwards, what happens, automatic upon final say, this is one thing, and then in the people group flux field, what happens, sometimes you may have to use the people group flux field over here. Fine. Some flux field has to be used. Fine. Even if it is blank, it doesn't matter, fine. So these are the two important ones from a procurement perspective, fine, go there and then modify it. If somebody has created it, no, fine. Let us say your team is not having your uh, client is not having any HCM in, implemented, and then they have only financials and projects. So what happens? The financial team will be creating it. You modify this. And then afterwards, in the bottom, what happens? Position synchronization. What happens? You put a tick mark on everything. Right? Put a tick mark on everything. So all the tick marks are put. Fine. This is one thing. So these are the only things. So the position synchronization and then the initial start number and then automatic upon final save are the ones. Fine. I will not cancel it. I'm not submitting anything at all. Don't do anything at all. Do not fiddle upon all these things. I leave it as such. I leave it. Leave the system to work because they're all okay as such. And there's no need to. What happens? I make a change on this. So this is now complete. I go there. Now what happens? I get a great location. In in this thing, what happens? I will now uh, take a G as a uh, what happens as a prefix. Now fine. G zero one is my prefix. Now fine. I will now be creating everything on this. Now, fine. So before I create the location, what happens? In this there is a small bug there. The location cannot be edited after save. So what happens? I will now create the location a bit later actually. Fine. I will now do it a bit later. I am going to get two locations, but since it is already got a small, not a bug basically, there is a restriction on this uh, visual instance actually. I will uh, show it to you later on. So when, when I created what happens, I had to populate the organization also because of which what happens, I am not doing it now. I will be doing it a bit later. Then afterwards what happens, I go there, I will not get the legal jurisdiction for it. Manage legal jurisdiction. Upon. You take the copy of the task and go there. I will not put it up on this place. Manage legal jurisdiction is the one. I am now taking it now. I go there. So manage legal jurisdiction one. Click on it. You go inside. <clears throat> And then here, what happens? I will not give a person. This is the area where what happens? Your country, your uh, area is now specified actually. Fine. Let's say you are in the, uh, Africa, in which what happens? Uh, two, three countries put together will be forming one jurisdiction. Actually. So I am not going to use G01. Right? G01, <coughs> I am putting it on the underscore jurisdiction. Can you make this size slightly bigger actually? Once again, I'm going to stop the sharing. I will not see if the recording is going on. My recording is also going on. Okay. Pass uh, recording. I will remove the pass recording. I will not share the screen. <clears throat> so here, what happens? I have not given the jurisdiction over here. Territory, what happens? I will not use one of the territory which is not used as such. No, here in this place. G01 jurisdiction is there. What happens? I will not say uh, Angula. What is this? Territory. And we love make it as identifying one and then go there and then uh, you make the legal registration code now and top it down. I will not say something else. Fine. This will be done by the actually the registering authority actually from your company. Fine, I'm not just and then give a save now. Fine, which what happens. My G01 jurisdiction is not saying it is not saying that what happens uh, is, uh, is required. Fine, uh, what happens uh, legal jurisdiction is required. Uh, here it is not uh, fine. I will not say commercial tax and then give a save. 
So I'm not saving it. Now, there is no save. And then what happens? I can even add a legal function to it. Now, I click on it, legal function. I'm going to add it. Now, drop it down, and then use some other functions, and then give a save. Now, so by which the jurisdiction is done. So this will be done by the uh, what happens? Uh, the company registering authority. That when you discuss with the client, what happens? They will be giving you all this data, the informations. So either the financial team or by some other people will be doing it. Now, by which our jurisdiction is done. Now, save and close. This activity is complete. Now, we go there. Go to the next one. So now what happens, I will not make the legal authority over here and go there. I will not take over it and then take it to the legal authority. Go there, paste it and then manage the legal authority is the one. Manage the legal authority is the one and go there. The task name, I click on it. So we are not going for this now. <clears throat> so here what happens, I will not give a plus and then I will not create a legal authority. So it is a G01 legal authority and G01 underscore legal underscore authority. And then the tax save is what I will not say collection reporting. So at this stage, what I'm going to give address also. I'm going to give address for this one. So address line is what I will always affix my number over there. I'll find G01 underscore ADDR1. And then what I'm going to city, I will not put as a New York name. State, what I'm going to say New York. Let me put it for it now. So I won't choose a New York, New York, New York. So the address is now chosen now. Fine, go that. I will not say time zone. Okay, or the county. Everything is there. Postal code is also coming on here as well. And then I will not click on the address purposes now. Fine, the legal authority has got some purposes. What exactly is the one? This is the place where you are going to. What happens? Uh, file your taxes and things. Fine, you are going to pay, make a pay, uh, listing payment now. Fine, go that. So something I am now putting to find some business or something. Like that. So keep okay. okay. The address is now created. So this is the legal authority to which what happens? Your payable steam will be making a payment of all your taxes and things. So click on the registry categories and then we'll be adding it now and we'll drop it down and choose one of them now. Whichever is applicable, and choose it and then click on save by which one of us. The legal authority creation is now complete now. So <clears throat> change the save. It all automatically becomes a we have multiple addresses are becoming fine. Go there, save and close. Your G01 legal authority is not done. Now, next activity is what you go there and then do it now. Right? Manage the legal address now. Right? Your company's address must be created over here now. Right? The company's legal address. The implementing company's legal address actually. And then click on manage legal address now. Click on it. So manage legal address is the one by which what happens. I'm not going to create one. And click on the plus and then let me create the address now. I will not say what happens. G01. G01. Legal address. Legal address. And then city is New York. So go on and search for it now. New York. <coughs> so New York, New York. I'm putting it now. Click on it. And then everything is now getting populated over there. And the postal code is 10020. And go there and then click on OK. By which, what happens? Sir? The United States. I'm not using always United States because it's easy for the system now. And go there as waters. And then give a save. By which, what happens in the bottom? The G01 legal address is now getting created now. So this is the address of the implementing company, remember. Fine, it must be very proper now. And go there. Click on save and close now. So this is now complete. Next one is what you go there. We will not get the legal entity. Legal entity is the heart of a structure, and so what happens? It has to be created now, and we are going to get the legal entity. Paste it over here. Manage legal entities the one. So click on manage legal entities. This is the heart of a structure now. And go there. I will now say G01. Sorry. G01 legal entity. I know I know put a good put the identifier now. And G01 underscore legal underscore identifier. And then I will you enable the payroll statutory as well as the legal uh, employer also. Right? So these two things I am enabling it now. So this is the recommendation given by the what happens the CM team now actually. Right? It is always preferable to employ, even though the payroll may not be uh, what happens in, implemented in this now. And then go there. The legal entity I will now put G01 and then give a tab now. And then what happens the place of registration I'm going to put it in New York. So that's it, fine. There is no need for the start and ending. And then these are all the mandatory fields. I will not say G01, 1, 2, 3. It should be a unique number. And so what happens? I am putting this number, fine, 4, 5, 6. And that's it. Any questions on the legal entity? So the legal entity is the heart of a structure, and then we are now creating this legal entity. Click on save and close, by which what happens? Become later. Save and close. So the legal entity is now getting created. The G01 legal entity is now ready for our transactions, actually. We'll go there and then come down. The next one is what we are going to give the legal entity HCM information. If this is not done, what happens? The managed legal entity HCM information if it is not done, what happens? We cannot create employees at all. The important one, I take over it, and then we are going to do that. I will now paste the task over here, and then for employee creation, this task is a must actually. 
I click on a top and we are over there. Boy, so I am not giving the name of the top. I click on the name. Is not so here, what happens? I will not query my G zero one. My G zero one. Let me make a search on this now. So once when you make a search, it is coming. So click on the hyperlink or the link ready. It will open up. And then in the main one, what happens if you go there, go to the position synchronization of the legal employer, if you click on it, it will not say use enterprise. In the enterprise, we have already enabled all these things and so what happens if we are using it. There is no need for us to make anything, change it all and always use enterprise the best one. And then here what happens, you go there and then first of all, it will not go for an update now. And then it is update. And then it is not going for this one. I am updating it actually. So it is preferable to update because what happens, we can understand about who has made the change and then what change has been made by which user actually. You click on the position synchronization, and then here what happens? Use interface is coming back. Don't make any change at all. Right? And then you go to the pay payroll statutory unit. In the go to the payroll statutory unit. And then here what happens? When you are implementing it fresh, your LE name itself will be coming. LE name, LE legal entity name itself will be coming. So here what happens? The vision one, and then something is coming. So I will now use that. What happens? Uh, US one. Once again, US one. And then you will have no. I will see. One of them will be available. Fine, go there. One US legislative data group will be available. One time go there. Click on search now. I will not say US and then click a search now. I will not search for it. Then do it. So I am not using this now. Fine. All of you can very well use it now because this legislative this is called LDG. The LDG is now very perfectly set as such by, by the HCM team actually you can use it now. In reality, what happens? Your LE name itself will be coming when you are going for a fresh implementation. Right? You can even put it over there. And then click on submit by which what happens is not done. This facilitates employee creation. Remember, legal employee creation can be done only when the what happens this uh, uh, legal information is not given on this one. Any doubts on this one? Click on submit now and I'm going to submit it. So by this, what happens is not getting completed now. So the legal entity information is not is not completed now. Right? The request has been submitted. Go, there, so go for the next task now. Go there. Now we are going to create the manage chart of accounts now. Go there. So first of all, we'll now create the chart of account value sets over here now. Go there. Click on that now. So let us now go ahead and then create the value sets on this one. Click on that now. Go on it. <coughs> and then manage chart of accounts value sets. Mic is on, please, please, please. What wait, man? All of you, please. Move. Somebody's mic is on. So manage chart of accounts value sets. The one. Click on it now. So let us now create. So we are going to have a three segmental chart of accounts for us. No fine. For let us now first create the first value set. No fine. For the company value set. Click on first. No fine. Over So it's a G zero one. Fine. Company value set one. So I will not take copy of it now. Fine, I will not put on the description. No. Case no, you know. Module, I drop it down. I will not make it as general engine. No. GL, general engine the one. And then value type, I will not make it as what? For independent now. I will not make it as independent. Independent. And then here, I will not choose what character. And then I will not use the subtype as text now. Fine, text is the one. And then here, I will not make it as two characters. No. The minimum and maximum value, the what happened, the uppercase and zero fill is not required for this one. Fine. So the company value set one is now ready. Fine, click on seven close. And then similarly, what happens? I'll not do that. The department value set. Fine. Click on let me create the department value set and go there. The value set code is what? G01. Fine. With the <coughs> department value set two. The value set two is now getting created. Fine. Go there. Take copy of it now. Fine. Go there. So click on the description now. And then the module, the module which you have chosen, the top will be coming over again. Fine. Whatever you have chosen as a general that will be coming at the top now. And then make it as a what? Independent. <coughs> And then here, what are the, make it as character and then make it as a text. So, you know, the subtype will be text actually. Fine, go the text. Here. And then the maximum value, I'm going to have three characters. Now, fine, go there. I'm going to make it as three. Fine, three characters. So, save and close. And then we'll now go for the natural account segment actually. And the next one is the natural account. Fine, go there. Click on plus now. And then let's now create this one. Fine, go there. It's what? It's a G01. Fine, it's a, what happens? Accounting. Accounting value set three. Fine, so, take a of it now. And then put in the description, and then here, what happens? The drop down and then choose the module over here now. The module is this now. So, here again, what happens? I'll now make it as an independent now. <clears throat> here, drop it down and then make it as a character, and then go there, drop it as a text now. And then here, go there. I'll now make it as a four character accounting. Now, go there. So, save and close. So, by which, what happens? We have completed the creation of all the three value sets for our own. And go there and then make it for you. G01 on the entry now. So, once an entry, we'll now find everything coming up now. <clears throat> I'm going fast. It's okay enough. Fine. You're able to understand it now. No problem. Let's go. Same and close by which what happens is now completed. So the value sets for this is now completed now. Now what happens? I will now go on the create our accounting calendar now. Fine. Go there. So click on it now. <clears throat> so we'll not take over the what happens the task name and then go there and then put it over there. Then paste it over here now. Entry now. 
So manage accounting calendars. So click on the manage accounting calendars, <coughs> which what happens? You go to create a calendar and click on plus now. And then let me create a calendar over here. Go the calendar is what? It's a G01, is a KCCDG accounting and then Cal1. I will not copy this so that what happens? I'll put it on the description now. The start date is what? 1119. I'm going to put it now. Is that not? It's a monthly one. The deal limit, everything is okay now. Fine, go there. And then you're going to use this now. Fine, it's okay. And then drop down. I will know how what happens. I will know how once at the end. Fine, go there. So adjusting period will be one at the end. So if you provide all these details, what happens? It will automatically get the calendar. Fine, click on next now. Fine, you'll not see the accounting calendar coming up automatically over here now. For the whole year now. So from January to December, including the adjusting period, it's not coming over here. So it's all and then it's all automatically made. In emails, it is not so. We have to man manually create each and everything. Now here, what happens? Everything has been made automatic. So give us save and close. And then once when the periods are open, over what happens? It will be coming for the opening of the next period also. And we'll click on save and close now. So by which what happens? The accounting calendar creation is now complete. Now. Okay, man. Go there. <coughs> now what happens? We will now go on and create our chart of account structures over here. Now go there. Now click on done now. We are not going to create a structure. So paste it over here now and then click on enter now and we are going to create a structure. So manage chart of account structure is the one and click on it now. And we are going to create it now. So here I will know what happens. I give a blank search automatically. We have got only one key flux field as far as uh, uh, the financials is concerned now. So that is what is called general ledger. And go there, not coming. And you give a blank search. Click on the manage structures and then here what happens. I am not going to create a structure. Now. And click on plus now and let me create a structure. Now. So here, what happens? I go there. I will not get a structure name now. So I will not say G01. Fine. Accounting structure. <clears throat> so take a copy of it now. And then put on the description now. Paste it over here now. The delimiter I'm making it as a hyphen now. Fine. Make it as a hyphen. And then at this stage, if you give a save, the plus symbol on the segments will be coming now. Fine. Once on the name description, then the delimiter is given. I click on save now. So oh, the structure code. Okay, man. That is, that is missing now. So I will not paste it over here. And structure code. Mistake. Structure code, structure name, structure description, everything are now given. Thank you for saving. So we are now given the same. Now. Click on save. The plus symbol will be coming. Click on plus one. I will now again create the three segments over here. Now. I will now say G01 company. So take a copy of it now. Take a copy it. And then put on the AP name will be coming automatically. Click on the name and then paste it over here now. And then click on the description and then paste it over here now. So the sequence number is one. I will now say the prompt is this now. And then I will now put the short prompt over here and go there. C O M P as a short prompt in this one. And then display width is 20 characters now. And go there. And then the column is segment one. I'm going to match it to the first segment now. I always use sequential segments so that what happens, you won't be finding any difficulty in retrieving the information is very always use sequentially. So go there. I will now put G01 and then enter in now. And Value set will be coming. I will now use the first value set over here now. And the company value set is in there. Now I'm going to give the flux field qualifier now. Right? The flux field qualifier for this company segment is what? It's a primary balancing. You have got three balancing basically, one primary and then two secondaries basically. I will not choose the primary balancing and then we know you know, and by which what happens. So give a save and close by which what happens. Our first uh, uh, segment is not ready. Thank you, and then I will not use the second one. Now. So the pass is now removed. And go there. Click on share now. Okay. Now, what happens? You go there, and then here we are not given this information. Fine, go there. So this is basically what we are into the second one, isn't it? Fine. Uh, uh, here in the department one. Fine, go there. Fine. I will not say it's a G zero one. Department. Fine, go there. So I will not take copy of the department. So I am now putting the department over here. Fine, take copy of it, and then one of the AP name will be coming over here. So click on the name and then paste it over here. Fine, description. I am pasting it over here. So this is sequence number two. The prompt is this now, and then go there. The short prompt, I okay, paste it over here. DP, DP the one. Go there. So display with this 20 characters now, and then afterwards column type. You choose the se sequence segment two now. Right? Sequentially you choose it now and drop it down, and then choose your what happens. You choose your value set now. And department value set. I'm going to choose it now. Right? G01, and then enter it now. So the department value set. I'm going to choose it. Choose it and then click on OK now. And maybe choose not that. <coughs> So then here the department is a cost center now. Go there is a cost center, and then bring it over here now. And what us? And then click on save and close. And then go for the final one. And click on plus, and then I will now create the natural account segment. Go the accounting segment is the one. It's a G zero one. Accounting, and then you take a copy of it. And then put it on the one. And click on the name now. 
this program. Description of some basic the prompt is the sequence number is three here now. Click on the prompt and then paste it over here. So here I will put the short prompt over here now. Point it to the accounting ACCT. Display width is again 20 characters and then go there. Column map to segment three now actually. And segment three is the one which I'm mapping it now. So drop it down and then here what happens? You go there and then click on search now. And then I'm going to search for it. Now. That is a G01 or the one. And then enter it now. <clears throat> So if the value set three, I'm good to it. It's not done. And then what happens? I'm going to give the flux field qualifier as a natural segment. Now I'm going to that natural. It's a what is called a natural accounting company. The intercompany. Go down. Natural account segment is the one. Go down. So yeah, what's called yes, a structure should have at least one. Uh, what happens? The one balancing and then one natural accounting segment. Cost, uh, what happens? Uh, the cost center is optional actually. And for that, click on save and close by which what happens? The creation of all the three. So, this completes the structure creation and then give a save and close by which what happens? The structure gets created. Now, save and close. So, we are given the appropriate one now. And then click on done and then come out of it. Now, we go and then create our structure instances. Now, fine. We are going to get the structure instances. If I click on the manage structure instances, then here what happens? I'm going to create the structure instances actually. And go that click on plus now. Fine. Let me get the structure instances. So here, what happens? You go there. Structure name is what G zero one, and then what happens? I will not say accounting. And then instance. I am putting this instance name over there. Remember, this is the one which is transactable and not the structure actually. The instance is only one which is transactable actually, on which what happens? All your transactions will take place. No? Paste it over, you know. One structure can have multiple instances actually. Go there and paste it. Now. And then here I have to reference it. Now. Go there. I will not put the reference over here. Now. I will not put the G. G01 accounting structure. I'm referencing it. So the moment oh god, a G01 accounting. The moment you reference it, what happens? All the segments are coming up. And then here, what you cannot do is what we cannot add or delete any segments. Actually, you can only use it now. And then here, it is up in EBIS. What happens? It becomes automatically required. So here, what happens? We have to make it explicitly required. And select and then click on edit now. I'm going to make it as a required now. So put a tick mark on this required and click on OK now. And on that. And then select it and then click on what happens, edit, and then what happens, you go there. And then I put on required, you know. And then the third one also, what happens, select and then click on edit, by which what happens, you are making this required. It's all done now, fine. Give a save and close now. Fine, go there. Click on save and close, by which this is now complete now. Click on save and close. Now you're going to deploy it now. Fine, go there. Sir, uh, excuse me, sir. Tell me, yeah. Sir, I'm having a doubt. Yeah. Sir, in EBS, uh, in COA, we, we will have segment value heads and what does it mean about instance? Yeah, here also we'll be having values now. Fine, we'll be giving a value a bit later now. No, that is okay. What is about instance? Instance only will be having values actually. The value sets will be associated. Oh, you know, fine. Click on it and then you can go there. Click on edit now. And then here, what happens? You can even make a change of the value set codes. Company value set is there. Now, fine. Go there. So it is not having a company value set. So this value set code can be changed for every instance. Every instance can have different different values. That is the beauty of it. Now, right? so one instance can have one instance is having three instances, and then every instance can have its own value set. Such. So, uh, for one CUA, I can have, I can able to have only one instance, right? For one structure, we can have n number of instances, and then every instance can have its own value set. So how will be the usage if I am having multiple instances? Say for example, uh, I have an instance in US now. Fine. US will be having the list of cities as US cities, and then UK will be using UK cities. So likewise, what happens? The value sets can be changed for the same instance for different different usages. Actually. So I have only one CUA, but I have multiple, uh, multiple. One. The 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 instance the instance will be having three segment or four segment. Let us say. Fine. The same three segment or four segment will have different different value sets in different different countries. Actually. Okay, 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 sir. I got it. Right. Thanks, sir. So give a cancel now. So I will now give a save and close. No fine. Come out of it. No fine. Use all that. So we are now made as required. Also fine. No done. And then now what happens? You give it done now. And then now what happens? I'm going to what? I'm going to deploy it. So once when you deploy it, if there is no error, what happens? The deployment schedule will become green now. Click on deployment. So the deployment is going to begin now. It will to take some time, and then afterwards, what happens? We'll not go hard on that sense. So once when it is deployed, what happens? The manage deploy button is not done. Fine. The sixteenth step is also completed. Now what happens? We go there and then give the values. The seventeenth step. Is going to give the values. 
So wait for the deployment to complete now. Let me pause it for some time. So we are now beginning. And so what happens? The thing has got deployed as successful. And even if you make a small mistake, what happens? The deployment will not be going ahead as such. Not so don't make any mistakes in what happens? Setting up your structures, instances, and other things. Otherwise, what happens? Nobody can proceed on this. Not even fine. This is a very sensitive one. Okay, no, okay, no. And then after this is done, what happens? Anybody can use it. What's what the tick mark is going? So our G01 accounting instance is now ready. Now, what happens? We'll now go to the same manage chart of accounts value search now. And then we are going to give values over here. Okay, we'll take time for this. Good. Then we'll go to the space. Paste it over here. And then we are at the time. Manage chart of accounts value search now. So click on it. And then here, let me query my uh, G01 now over here. Now. <coughs> let me query there. Fine. Go there. G01 the one. Enter it now. Fine. I'm going to query it now. So once you're query, you will be getting it now. Fine. Keep your company in the concern and then click on the manage values. Now. I will now have two values of 10 and 11. Now. Fine. Click on manage values. I'm not going to have two values of 10 and 11. Fine. Click on plus now. Fine. Let me have two values of 10 and 11. Actually. So the value is 10 now. Fine. Go there 10. And then go there. Save and close now. It, what happens? The summary is always no. Fine. Allow budgeting and allow posting or segmental qualifiers actually. Fine. I'm not touching any of the segmental qualifiers. Fine. We are not going to do any activity on the financial side. The segmental qualifiers are not, not touched. But the flux field qualifiers of what? Your natural accounting segment, your what happens, your primary balancing segment and cost centers are being given out. Fine. Whereas segmental qualifiers, we are not touching it. Only thing is summary is no means what? It is a transactional account. If it is yes, it is a summary account actually. So click on save and close. Fine. Okay, I have to give one more value of so that's what I have to do. Click on manage values. And then let me add one more value. Fine. Click on plus one. Go search for it now. It will not show you all the values now. And click on plus one. And let me add that. What happens? 11. Fine. 11. Go there. Go on this. And then give a save and close. So we have two values for the company 10 and 11 now. Keep your customer in the department and then I'm going to what happens there. Click on the manage values and then I'm going to the values for this one. Go click on plus one. Fine. I will have two values of 100 and 111. Go there. 100 is the one. Go 100. And go there. What else? The summary is no fine. Okay. So they are also having a similar type of a stuff, what happens, segmental qualifiers. Both of them are having it. Okay. I will give a plus. Okay. Go there. You know, have one more. Demand. So 101. Okay. 101. 101. Go there. What else? So somebody is not on the close. So this is not completed. Okay. Go there. What else? <coughs> so afterwards, what happens? They go to the accounting segment. Click on the accounting. And then here, what happens? They go to the manage values. And then here, go to the values. Click on plus. Now. So here, what happens? I now have four values for this trading. Okay. Go there. 1000 is an asset account. I'm going to give it and then I will now make it as what this allow budgeting is an account type. I'm going to make it as an asset. I am going to have use four values for this training now. And then click on plus now. Fine, go there. I will now put 1001 over here now. Fine, go there. Click on this 1001 of the one. I will now put 1001 of the uh, description also here. 1000. Fine, go there. So here it will be an expense account. Fine, go there. Allow budgeting account type this is expense now. Drop it down. And then I make it as an expense. So the thousand is an asset account, thousand one is an expense account. Remember, fine, go there. click on plus now, fine. and then thousand and two is a liability account. Fine, go there. I am now going to put only the minimal accounting which is required for a procure to pay life cycle as well as the ordered cash life cycle. Fine, go and then go there. Here, what happens is a liability account. I'll now make it as a liability account. And then I will now go and click on plus and then add it now. Fine, go there. Click on plus and then let me add the final one, which is 1003. 1003 will be a owner's equity now, and that is required on the ledger options actually. Drop it down and then make it as a owner's equity. And that's it. Fine. By which what happens? The creation of the minimal accounts for our training is now complete. Now, 1000, 1001 is an expense, and then 1002 is a liability, and then 1003 is a owner's equity. Owner's equity. I click on seven close by which what happens? No complete. So we are given all these things now. So along with the appropriate segmental qualifiers. Now uh, we go there and then click on this one. Now. Fine, uh, we have completed the values also. Fine, go there. These are the values which are given for this now. Fine, thousand, thousand and one, thousand two, thousand three, so on. So now let us now go and then create our primary ledger. Now, fine, go there. Click on it. Take all of it and then go there. Click on what happens. Save and close by which what happens. Now completed. Come out of it. And then let us now create our primary ledger. Now, fine, go there. Click on place it. Manage primary ledger as a task. Go there. Click on it now. Fine, here what happens? I'm going to give it. Up. Your ledger will be having three C's, four C's actually. Fine, click on plus and then now populate over one. Fine, go there. It's a G zero one. Fine, it's a primary ledger. And take up it now. One, take up it. Put the description over here now. And then here, what happens? Chart of accounts, I drop it down. I'll now choose my chart of accounts over here now. G01. G01 is the one. The one. And then here, what happens? You go there. Accounting calendar. I'm going to put it now. Go there. So the chart of accounts is what? G01. Accounting instance is the one which I'm creating in the mind. Go there. Accounting calendar is what? G. I'm going to put it now. 
and then the currency i'm going to use it as a usd now find that's a very easy currency for us to work upon accounting method is what's not accrual so the chart of accounts which has got four c's the chart of accounts find the, the in the instance the accounting instance the the calendar currency and conversion is not on time so on which one of the same it goes by which for the accounting so the ledger is now created now the ledger is not done find the ledgers and outs now we have to specify the ledger options find specify the ledger options are the one we are doing now on that so for which what happens i will not go there i will not go to what i should not do the specific ledger options directly over here now find we have to go here for some months because scope selection is a must actually i will not say specify find ledger percentage opt percentage and go there entry now i'm going to use it now specific ledger options are one so in the specific ledger options what happens i go and then select the scope actually and click on select scope and select mat and then go there click on apply and go to ask and then here what happens i'm going to give a what happens your g01 and then entry now and then choose it and then click on save and close now <clears throat> so once you give a save and close what happens it comes to the ledger options over here okay? here what happens as a financial team you will be setting up a lot of things over here now fine baskaran made out taught you a lot of things whereas what happens from our side from a, as a procurement perspective what happens there are only two things which are very bare minimum fine drop it down the journal language i'm going to put it as what american english now fine american english and then here i will now put the owners equity account over here now what is the owners equity account anybody 10 iphone 100 iphone 1003 is 100% correct 1003 is the owners equity account and over there no putting it so the remaining i am not touching because i am not a financial guy i am a supply chain guy and so what happens the ledger options for this ledger for a minimal entry i am making it and i am giving a save and close now that's it by which what happens here now specify this you know that So afterwards, what happens? They go there. Assign legal entities is not going to that. So the next step is what? Assign legal entities, and then what happens? They go there. Assign the legal entities. Go to space. Assign legal entities to what? Assign balancing segment to legal entities, and then what happens? You don't do this ledger now. Fine. If you assign the balancing segment to ledger, it has got some lesser privilege. So always, what happens? Assign the balancing segment to the legal entities. Now, fine. Again, the scope is already selected now. Then go there. Click on it, and then I'm going to. I'm going to assign the balancing segment to this no point over there. So he's not giving. You're not assigned uh, legal entities. Okay, uh, the, the, this itself is not done. Fine. Do you want to continue? No, I will not come out of it now. Fine. So here uh, I have missed this one now. Fine. Assign legal entities is a task which I do. Then only what happens? I have to go for the balancing segment now. Fine. Assign legal entities is a task. So I have not done that now. Fine. Give a cancel and then come out of it now. I have to assign the legal entities. So assign legal entities is a task. This task I have to do it now. Fine. Go there. I have missed the task. and go the assign legal entities so you go there and then my ledger is here and then here what happens i am going to assign it now fine over there there is a small plus fine put you on to plus you click on this now fine and then go there and then query your legal entity fine over g01 and then entry now <clears throat> now coming fine over there click on it click on apply and then by which what happens the ledger legal entity association is not done so by which what happens i give a save and close no complete now what happens you go there to this now fine assign balancing segment values to legal entities So once when that is done, then we can go click on it now and go there. So here, what happens? You give I add now. Fine. Let me add ten now. Fine. Only one BSP. I'm going to add it for this exercise now. Go on and add the ten over here now. Fine. Click on save and close. By which what happens is now completed. So what happens? The balancing BSP is now assigned to the legal entity. Fine. Go there. Click on save and close. <coughs> you know that. Now go there. Go for the next one now. You know that. Now what happens? Now the next is what we are doing. We do and then submit. all the activities of this is not completed so we have completed a skeleton financial structure upon which what happens we are going to set up procurement actually right so we want to review and then submit the final one there is a review there not there so let me query on the review right so review the one i'm doing it now click on it so review and then submit ah i know the composition management actually i will not choose the financials and then i will go for review enter in now <coughs> So review and then submit. Review and then submit. Accounting conflict. There is a one. Select the scope of it now. Man. Click on select scope and drop it down. And then select that. And then click on apply and go to ask. And then choose our one now. Fine. Go there. G zero one. Issue. Go there. It is not coming. Fine. Go there. Select it. And then click on save and close. By which one of it is not going to the task. Now save and close. So it is not done. So it is not coming. Fine. Go there. Click on submit now. Fine. Simply submit. So by which what happens? The accounting configuration is now submitted. Which order was the concurrent will be running? So once when you have a look at the concurrent order, you can also see this now. Fine, go there. So so you now have a look at the concurrent now. Open up this now. After calm now. So click on plus and then paste it over here. Enter now. Yes. 
So let me go on and see this scheduled process now if I go there, click on it. Where are the tools? More. Tools and then scheduled process, you can now see the concurrence running up for, for Amazon. Submitting the accounting configuration, then all this is running now. So once when they are submitted, and then succeeded, what happens? You can now see if you go on and have a look at the managed primary ledger. So if you go on and have a look at the managed primary ledger now, and then if you go on and look at the managed primary, click on search now. <clears throat> it's manage primary ledger. You go there and then go to the task and then query your ledger now. Fine, you'll not find a green tick mark now. Fine, G01 and then enter in now. Fine, so by which you can now see. <laughs> If now the status is now in progress, now fine, go there. It is not yet completed actually because the concurrence is still running actually. So, once when the concurrence gets completed, what happens? You know, see a tick mark, a green tick will be coming up now. Fine, once when a green tick comes, what happens? Your skeleton activity on the financial structure is now complete now. Go there. So, give them put it now. Fine, go there. Enter it now. Fine, go there. No coming, coming. You are getting a green tick mark. Are you able to see this now? Fine, go there. Pacha color, chingi cha. Completed. <coughs> Activity is now complete. So click on that. Fine, go there. Now uh, we had to open this period now. Fine, I will. Uh, I will not open the period afterwards. Fine, let me open up the period a bit later now. Actually, now we'll now go ahead and create our managed business units. So the, we are now going to create our business units over here now. Fine, go there. So we are now going to create our business unit. Take a copy of it and then go there and then create a business unit. Paste over here. So manage business unit the one. Now what? Manage business unit. What are the mistake? Fine. Manage percentage. BUSA percentage. UNIT percentage. Okay. So manage business unit is the one. Fine. Click on it now. Fine. We won't do it. So we will be creating a business unit over here. Now fine. Go there. Click on plus now. Fine. It doesn't work. So we are now creating a business unit now. Fine. So the business unit is what? G01. Business unit. And then if there is anybody who is as, acting as a manager, we can very well put him as a manager, but he does not have any functionality as such. It's only for information purposes, actually. And then location is also for information purposes. It doesn't matter if you have a location, you can leave it as well as you go to the default. Set. And remember, this is a reference data set. And so what happens? It doesn't work on a common set at all. Fine. It is giving a lot of problems. And then what happens? You create a uh, default set and then afterwards associate it. Fine. Go there, click on it, download it. And then again, what happens? You go on the, what happens? They create. There's a create button is there at the bottom of the default set. Fine. Go there. Let us now create a one. I will not say G01 underscore RDS reference data set. And then it has been caps actually, fine, remember. So it should not be a small letter. I go that set name. I'm going to paste it over here you now on the description someplace. So I'm now creating it and then associating to our what happens the business group now. So the business group is what? G01 business group. Business unit. Yes, I am business unit. So G01 and then business unit is the one fine. by which what happens, we give a save and close and then we are now associated. We have created a what happens, a data set, fine, reference data set and then we are associating it. Fine, give a save and close by which what happens, the business unit gets created actually. The business unit is now created. Go there. Then what happens, assign business unit business function is the one point go there. We have to do it now. Fine, go there. Click on it. now we have to do what happens, assign business unit business function. So you will now say assign. So here I'll say again, what happens, you'll be having the scope selection, which is now getting involved. And so what happens, you go via this now. And go there. You go to the financials. And then here, what happens, you go there. Assign BUSI percentage. BUSI percentage and then entry now. So we're going to assign it now. So assign business unit business function. The What happens, the scope selection has to be changed now. Go there. Let me go and then make a change of this now. So you will not stop it on. And then now go on and what happens? Select mat. And then let me apply and go to task. And then let me select my G01 over there now. And I click on it and then G01 and then enter it now. I'm going to choose it now. And go there. So I'm entering it now. So click on search and then it will be coming. I'm fine. Select it and then click on save and close now. So for which what happens? We are going to assign different business functions over here now. I click on save and close now. When you do an upload, what happens? It selects everything over there. And all the things are getting selected by click and go there. And similarly, what happens? The data set, the reference data set is now assigned as a common one when you're creating via upload actually. Right. So here, when you're manually creating it, you have the control on this. The only thing is what you will now be spending approximately two to three hours extra, but manual process is always better actually. You will be having a control. Actually. So that is the best one. 
So try, try to choose whichever is more appropriate for you. In my opinion, what happens uh, since we are going to implement it for a customer, then it's only one time activity. So we can even book manually. In the automatic, when you're uploading it, what happens? The problem is what? The reference data set is common, and then what happens? It will be assigning all the business functions, and there will be some more other things which are what happens? Are getting set automatically, for which what happens? The naming conventions cannot be changed. So that's why what happens? It's that is not highly preferable. When you have huge uh, data, right? you have got uh, 10 or 15 business units, so many legal entities, then what happens? Uh, that method of doing it is not working. So, so get on with it. So here it's not working as such. No point. Sometimes it uh, make a nakara. It's like this. No point. Those are. So make agar naiki will not go there. Open up there. What happens? You are this thing. <clears throat> will open up Mozilla browser. Mozilla browser is somewhat what happens? Uh, most stable as far as this is concerned. No point. Go oh, there, then click on the Mozilla browser. Ah. Just coming. Why? Secure connection failed actually. Or the instance is it is down or what? what are you Maybe the instance will be down, I think, probably. That is what I feel now. Somebody has written some message. Yeah, they'll be explaining about RDS. Ah, uh, now what happens? I go there, G01. So let me explain about RDS also. I'll now choose it and then click on what happens. I save and close now. Oh, not happening. It's again fast, no? Not fast. And let me, I will not. Start to share your friend over. I will now explain you about the reference data set actually. So, if you have any doubt, what happens? Don't put a chat message because what happens? You raise your voice so that what happens? They'll understand. So, I kept it now. This has to be taken care of afterwards. Reference data set. This file was missing as such. So this is one such example of a reference data set actually. So reference data set is like this now. Thank you that uh, it's already recorded. No? Recording is going on. It's a part of that video only. Huh? RDS, I'm clarifying it. It's not a part of continuous section, of course. It is, is actually a clarification because somebody asked about what exactly is RDS. No? Okay, it's not a continuous session, it's only, a, it's only an explanation of this. Uh, let us say, you are now going to make a transaction with your credit card. So if you ask for, say, let's say, 1000 rupees, what happens, it will ask you the four digit pin actually. And if you are going to buy anything above 50,000 rupees, what happens, it will ask your mobile number also. Right? So an additional security is being asked for just to, what happens, to secure your transaction actually. Right? Your transaction is not a bogus one, right? just because it's a huge amount, because of which you are securing it now. So additional security is now being done on the credit card. Similarly, here also what happens is they have brought in this concept. So here, if a reference data set is assigned, what happens is those things can only be accessed, other things cannot be accessed. For example, what happens is I have a north set. I have three reference data set objects as far as uh, what happens is supply chain is concerned. One is what? The locations, the jobs, and then the departments. So there are only three things as far as supply chain is concerned. That is, I am now going to create a location. So when I'm saying what happens, I'm now creating a BU with a north set. Right? We are now created one thing called what? Uh, G01 underscore RDS. Okay, then that's one. And then I'm going to create a Delhi on a north set and then Bhopal on the north set also. Because they're all locations. And then these will be having a what happens, a reference data set. I'm not doing it. Now. And then what happens, a BU2 belongs to south set. Now. Right? BU2 belongs to south set. 
and then what happens? These are the locations which are known. And then BU3, what happens? I'm not creating a common set. And then what happens? Is a Nagpur is the one. <coughs> Nagpur belongs to common set. <coughs> these two belongs to whole set. These two belongs to not set. Now tell me, BU1 can access which which locations? What are they? It's partially correct. It is not fully correct actually. It's partially correct. Anybody else? Yeah, Nagpur also it can access. Fine. So if a particular element is now belonging to a common set, that can be accessed by any BU. Fine. So BU2 can access Madras, Hyderabad as well as Nagpur also. BU3, BU3 can access what? It is a common set and so what happens? It can access all the five locations actually. Because it belongs to a common set, and so what happens? BU3 can access all the five actually. Is it clear? Somebody who has asked this question, can you open up your mic and then speak now? Sir, sir, it is clear, sir. thanks. Because yeah, we and then there is one, some more concept is there. For example, the payment terms in the financial zone. Right? This can belong to North Set as well as South Set also. Two way net 30 belongs to North Set, whereas net 15 will now belong to what? North Set as well as South Set also. So one entity can be associated to multiple sets also. And that is not true on each and every uh, what happens elements actually. Payment terms is an exception, right? Whereas location can have only one set. Similarly, there are certain objects, they call them as a reference data set objects, right? Those objects, some of the objects can have only one set, some of the objects can have multiple sets also. Sir, so, one more, sir, one more thing. Uh, where do we exactly use this location uh, RDS? Yes. As far as location is concerned, you always create every location on a common set. Because what happens? Sir? There is no restriction required. Right? BU1 can only access Delhi and then BU2 cannot access Delhi. Such situation will never come in supply chain at all. In supply chain, all the three, anybody can use anything. But unfortunately, what happens is they have introduced this RDS concept. This is a very good one as far as what happens, HCM is concerned. Right? I am your boss. I can see your salary. Whereas you can you see my salary? You cannot see. Right? And then what happens? I can sanction your leave. You cannot sanction my leave. I can promote you, you cannot promote me. So likewise, what happens, there are so many restrictions which are there as far as HCM is concerned. Human capital, uh, human capital management has got so many restrictions. Only certain people can only do, certain people can only view, and then some people cannot view also. Likewise, what happens, there are so many restrictions. There only the RDS concept is excellently used. Similarly, in financials and projects also, to a certain extent it is used, but in supply chain, it's a useless one. So whenever we create anything, any entity, you always get a common set. <coughs> so is there any example for payment terms? Payment terms, right. I don't have any example basically. Fine. You have to only uh, talk to the financial guys. Okay, fine. So, and again, what happens is do not use the desktop mic. When you do use the desktop mic, what happens? It'll know uh, what happens, it'll know echo actually. If you have a headset mic, it will be excellent actually. A desktop mic will always be echoing like this. Click on this now, fine. Now, the next concept now, fine, go there. We are going to see the next concept now, fine, go there. We'll now have a look at the next concept. Click on it. So, you have one fusion enterprise is there. There is a fusion enterprise document is there, fine, go there. On which what happens, we are going to see the next document now. Next concept, actually. You go there, fusion enterprise. <clears throat> this is a beautiful concept. This is equivalent to multi org access control of EBS, basically. Fine. It's equivalent to multi org access control of EBS, fine, go there. So let us say we have uh, what happens the three business units are there. Fine. So the demand begins on a requisitioning BU. The, the thing which is now creating the requisition is called a demand, is not going to begin now. Fine. And then it's going to make a sourcing now. Fine. In the sourcing, what happens? The RFQs and ports are involved. The buy is basically responsible for purchase orders. The pay is responsible for making a payment actually. Typically speaking, what happens? All the BUs will be independent now. Fine. Every BU will be doing its own. The first BU will be doing the requisition. It itself will know source, it will now buy, and then it will not pay. Right? <clears throat> so everything is not done. The right hand side, if you see, is a centralized sourcing and then local execution. So BU1 and BU2 will now be creating the requisitions. There is now the start of a demand actually. Oh, yeah. Right. So here, what happens? The BU1 and then the BU2 are the what happens? The demand creation BUs. Then, then what happens? SSC BU is a sourcing BU actually. 
So this is now going to source what happens all your requisitions, all your RFQs and codes. And then once when everything is now done, what happens? It will now make a comparative statement and then it will now pass on the best code to the respective BUs. So the respective BUs will now make the buy as well as they will now make a buy. Right? The sourcing is centralized actually. So this is called centralized sourcing and then local execution actually. <coughs> The third one, what happens is a completely shared services. So BU1 and BU2 make the requisition. The sourcing is done by SSCBU, and then it will also make the purchase orders, and then it will also make a payment. So once when the payment is made, what happens is you will now make an intercompany, what happens is a payables and receivables transaction through which what happens will be passing on to the respective what happens is BUs, will be, all the invoice transactions, all the things. So this is called completely shared services. The fourth one is what? Transfer procurement to local BU. So then here what happens, you will be having requisition done by this. SSC will now do the sourcing and then BU2 will now make a buy. And then finally it will now make a payment and then it will be doing it. So there may be n number of combinations on this business model actually. This is only an example of four such business models. Let us say you have seven BUs and then the, the relationship is very complex actually. Right? One doing one thing and then another doing one thing. So first of all what happens, you have to identify how they are operating upon. So once when they know about how they are operating upon, Putting it in the system is very easy. Right. So we have to make one of them. Here what happens, whichever is now making the requisition is known as a client BU. And then whichever is processing this are all known as what? Your service provider BUs. <coughs> so that has to be entered the system. So we will now go for a break and then what happens, we will now come back and then we will now see but how to put which is a service provider and then which is a client BU as such. So let us start the session actually. Fine, go there. I will now share the screen actually. So now the next activity is what assign business unit business function. So let us go there and then do it now. Assign business unit business function is a task now. So here is a task and then the scope is also selected as my G01 business unit. And click on this and then we go there. And then. So here billing and revenue management is not required for this training of and leave it. Corrections is not required. Customer contact is not required, customer payment is not required, expense is not required, incentive is not required, middle management is required for us, no point that. And then the payables invoicing is required. <clears throat> so the payables invoicing is required. And then the payables payment is required. Okay, man, it's not coming. Warning. So you select this now, fine with And then the procurement is required. And then the procurement contract is not required. Go down. I will not choose the receiving now. Receiving. And then I will not see the requisitioning. And then what I was uh, is not required. Sales is not required. <coughs> That's okay. So uh, receiving, requisitioning, and then what about the procurement, and then the pay payables and procurement, and then the middle management. These are the basic ones which are required. And then since it has been chosen, what happens? You go and then drop down and then choose your primary ledger over here. And then click on search. And then let us now populate our ledger over here. And G01. And then click on search. Select it and then click on OK. So by which what happens will be coming. And this will be enabled for costing actually. Fine. That is not going to be part of this training actually. So we are now cert chosen certain business functions for our business unit actually. So any doubts on this one? And then I will now give a save and close now. And click on save and close by which what happens that. It's not going to give a big warning now. Fine. It doesn't matter. It's exactly equivalent to what we have in manufacturing in EBS basically. That type of warning is coming. Fine. Ignore this warning and then click on OK. <coughs> So by which what happens is now completed. So we are now assigned the business unit business function for this. Now we are going to give the manage business unit set assignments, and then this is not required because what happens is we have already created everything on our own RDS, and so what happens is there is no need for us to make any change at all on this one. So manage business unit set assignment we want. So we are going to work on this now, and there is no need to change at all. So manage business unit set assignment. If you see our G01 RDS is going to be there everywhere. So there is no need to change anything at all. And remember, uh, the receivables as well as the customer creations are sensitive for this one. They will not work on the common set now. So since we are not created anything on the common set, so we are not created everything on our reference data set only. So that is the not a problem. Now, the service provider client relationship has to be given. Fine. This is the one which you have to create understand now. Fine. Let us say I am an employee. Now what happens? I have not joined Tata. <clears throat> now the next month. I want to work on Birla. And then on the next next month, I want to work on Reliance. Can I do like this? I'm an employee. I'm an I'm a consultant actually. 
So I am now working on Tata. Right? Next month I want to work on Birla, and then next next month I want to work on Reliance. It's not possible at all, right? Because you are not going to choose the company to whom you are going to provide the service. Actually, right? they are the clients. The clients can only choose the service providers. And similarly here also, what happens is there will be a client BU. The client BU is the one where what happens is the requisition begins. Right? The requisition originates actually. There is a client BU because there is a demand. So wherever the demand originates, that is called the client BU. And then the client BU only will receive actually. So the requisitioning BU will be receiving it also because he makes what happens. A client BU is now making a requisition for the laptop. The supplier supplies it. They will now receive it because whomsoever is demanding, they are going to receive it. So the client BU has got a function support requisitioning and receiving whereas the purchase order making is a service providers activity he is going to provide the service provider, the purchase officer so if you have going to have a separate bu for purchasing what happens that will be what happens a service provider BU. similarly payment is a service provider BU. quality inspection is a service provider BU. so these are all the service provider BUs which are there so now based upon this drawing i have given you one one such thing now based upon this now so now, first of all, you have to identify which BU is a client BU and then which is a service provider BU. <clears throat> and then what happens? There may be six or seven BUs. And then configure your what happens? You are going to configure it in the system. Right? So a client BU can only select a service provider BU. Problem, right? A client only can select a service. Provider. So we are going to do the first activity of what selecting the service provider BU. So so we have to sit upon a client and then choose the service providers basically. We have to sit upon a client and then choose the service provider. Model. Uh, again, what happens? The chat messages. Uh, why? Who is saying that he is not able to hear my voice? No. Yeah, yeah. Who is this? Yeah, yeah. No. Outside. He is sitting outside. Or yeah. ask him. Man, what is the problem for him? No. Man, you will not make a pass. No. You are able to hear, no? Yeah. Or other. And again, don't put a chat message. Please open up your mic and then speak a few words. Okay, doesn't matter. Fine. If it is a few words, you can speak it now. Other, otherwise, what happens? You need a headset for speaking. Otherwise, what happens? You need a perfect work card, sir. Ah, anga, anga, get that problem. Okay. Fine. Now, what happens? I am going to sit on a client and then choose the service provider. So let us go there and then do this. <clears throat> so we will now go there and then choose the service provider. So let me open up one more tab, sir. No, I will not open up multiple tab regions for this one. Copy and then here it's right click and then duplicate, duplicate tab. So we'll not duplicate the tab, and then we'll not go to this place. Now. <clears throat> so here you go there, you go to the setup and maintenance, and then go to the task now. Click on the task, manage business units. Go there. Again, somebody is writing it on the chat message. Fine, it's difficult for me to monitor the chat actually. What is the issue with our connectivity? We are checking it out. Click on go to Zoom. So manage business unit is the one. Manage percentage. BUSA percentage, fine. Unit percentage, fine. Manage business unit is the one. So we'll now go to the manage business units. And then let me query your business unit. So go there. I am now querying my client BU. You must know which is your client and then which is your service provider first of all. And then afterwards, what happens? You select it. And then go to actions. And then here, what happens? You go and then manage service providers. So if this is a client, you query your client and then click on the manage service provider. The manage service providers, and then there, what happens? You keep adding it now. Fine. Go there, procurement BU, fine. Procurement service providers, fine. Give a plus now. Fine. I'm going to give a plus. Now, already, what happens? This is the procurement BU. By default, the same BU will become the client as well as the service provider. Also. But if somebody else also has to make a purchase order, what you do is you give a plus, give a plus, and then add those things. Also. Fine. Click on search now. Fine. Go there. Click on. So I'm not choosing this. Huh? I click on apply and then click on that. And then you feel that this BU should not do any purchase orders, then remove the active button over here. On the right hand side, active is there. If you remove it, what happens? This one you will do it. So this way, you assign your service providers for what? For your payables as well as your purchasing. So by default, the same one comes over here. No? Fine. You add it and then if you want, you can remove it. And then what happens? You give a save. I'm not saving it. Fine. So this is basically dependent upon what? This is basically dependent upon uh, this function. You can go there, this one. So you will know on paper draw how your client and service providers are related actually. So once when this diagram is drawn, then sit on your client and then choose your service providers. And remember, 
from a service provider we cannot choose a client when i already told you a service provider cannot choose a client whereas he can only view the service provider can only view he only view the client so only a client can choose the service provider view once when drawing this diagram is very 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 difficult this is the diagram which is very difficult and then putting it on the system is jujubi fine that very very easy fine that is not having any problem at all that can be done very easily Okay, on the side. So, then order. So, this is the way we are going to choose our. What happens here? I will not give a cancel now. And then sit on your. What happens your your service provider views? Let us say you go there. I am not going to query it now. I go there. G zero one. I am querying it now. So, this is the service provider view. Now we can view the client from here. Fine. Select it. And then go to actions. And then here, what happens? We can view the service clients. You sit on your service provider and then go and then view who are all your clients. Here we can only view. Basically, you cannot do any modification and such. So this way, you configure your complete business of service provider and client appropriately. But drawing this diagram is a very difficult one. What I come? If you draw this diagram about how they are going to operate upon, is it going to be a completely shared services or a centralized sourcing or transfer procurement to local BU or business place? Then <coughs> what happens? Putting it on the system is so easy. So this is on that. Client and service provider views. Frankly, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it now. For what I'm in this case, what happens? I'm not operating in a centralized zone, decentralized zone. So every BU is its own. What happens? A client as well as a service provider. Also. They will not get the requisition. They will not make the purchase orders, and then they will also going to make a payment. So 95 percent of your or 98 percent of your business will now run like this only as independently. But if they're going to have a complex requirement like this, what happens? Very complicated. Got it now. So you go there. Go further now. So this is not done. Fine, go there. So thirty-first step is now complete. Now we jump into inventory now. Fine, go there. We are now going to create what happens inventory now. Fine, go there. We will now create our workday patterns. Fine, go there. The workday patterns going to be created. Fine, go there. The task now. Fine, go there. Let us now create the workday pattern. Click on it. Manage workday patterns. Paste it over here now. Fine, go there. Manage facility workday patterns. Fine, click on it now. Fine. How they are going to work upon? So let me create my one now. Fine, go there. Click on plus now. So let me create my workday pattern over here now. Fine, go there. It's a G zero one. Fine, it's a workday pattern. So I will not take copy of it now. I will take copy and then put on the page. Paste it now. And then length in days. It is how it was having a bug actually. If you give five days of working and then two days off, it's not working for order management actually. Fine, always give seven. So it was having a bug actually. I don't know whether they have rectified the bug or not. Fine. When we were working on release eleven, at the time what happens when you give five days as a working days? What happens? It is not working at all. It is giving throwing error actually. When, when you make it a seven, it is working. When you raise the SR, what happens? They ask us to what happens? They make it a seven, and probably they better rectify the thing. But what happens? Always use the seven. And anybody knows uh, the workday pattern? Fine, go there. Go to the actions, and then what happens? I don't add a row now. I'm going to add. So the start day is one now, and then the end day is going to be what? Give a tab. I will not make it as a seven now. And then ship name. Fine, go there. I will not give a ship name now. Fine, go there. Uh, whatever and the ship name you're going to do it now. Fine, go there. And then the ship type is this. Fine, go there. Go further, go further, go further. And then give a save. And tell me which module is sensitive to the uh, workday calendar, workday pattern specifically. Anybody? Yes, nah? yes, no, no. Hey, I can only SCM guys can tell this now. Inventory. inventory is not sensitive at all. <laughs> Come on. Have you ever seen inventory working only from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. to 5 p.m.? Shipping, sir. Yes. Shipping management. Shipping management is sensitive. Fine. Shipping management, if it is a holiday, you cannot ship. And then apart from that, there is one more module which is sensitive for this calendars, which is one. Supply chain team has to tell now. Inventory is not sensitive. Whatever you give, inventory will work 24 hours a day. Fine. You can make the transactions 24 hours a day. Advanced supply chain planning. In fusion, what happens is called planning. So these modules are only sensitive to the planning in the, the calendars. Others we need it for namesake. For pure inventory, you need to name check. So give whatever thing, and then manufacturing, and then manufacturing coupled with what happens? The planning central is sensitive for this. So click on save and close now, fine. So I have now created one G or one day pattern. Afterwards, we go there. We will now go to the manage facility schedule. Is the one fine? Go there. We take copy of it now, fine. Go there, close. And then click on turn now, and then we now do this manage facility schedule. So go there. Paste it over here, and then enter it now, fine. We are going to see the facility schedule. Click on it now. <coughs> So click on plus on that. What happens? We are now going to get the facility schedule. It's a what? It's a G zero one. Fine. Facility schedule. Facility schedule one. So go there and then take the copy of it and put it in the description. Now, 
And then the quarterly type has been enhanced actually. Fine, in the EBIS, we have only two such quarterly types. Fine, again, what happens? It has been enhanced to three actually. Fine, so it is a greater variation actually. Fine, both are what else? How your year is going to be, what happens? Split into 52 weeks as such. No, fine, that. And then here, uh, in EBIS, it comes as only four years actually. Here, it comes as only one day. So go there and then make a change to what? So, whatever it is. You can even go for some 10 years also. EBIS, by default, it comes as four years here. What happens? It, by default, it comes as only one day. Go there, click on plus now. So, we are going to create the schedule details now. So, sequence number is 10 now. This is almost same like what we have in EBIS now. We don't have any change at all. So, I don't choose the G01 now. I will put the G01 pattern. Entering. And then choose it now. Click on OK. I'm putting it, everything is behind now. So, save and close by which what happens? My facility schedule is now ready. I click on save and close. And then I have missed one more thing, fine brother. You must enter a valid name. What is sequence name, fine brother? Sequence name must be one night. One and then the seven close now. So I have created a workday pattern as well as a facility schedule now. Fine. These two things are done. And then what I have not done is what I have not done there. What's called a, a managed facility ships. I have not done. Workday pattern. And then what am I going to It doesn't matter. Fine. Here, uh, we don't have much of a dependency as far as the inventory is concerned. So even you can even directly create one of them. Because we need to populate this on inventory. And then remember, if you don't give seven days, order management was failing. And then I don't know what is the present status of this. And then here, what happens? I'm now going to create two inventory orgs. Now, fine, give a day. I will now create the two inventory orgs. Click on done now. Fine, let me create the inventory orgs. <coughs> Go there. Paste it over here, manage inventory org. <coughs> Organization. Manage inventory org facility manager. So manage inventory organization mark for that. And remember, there is one item organization has been introduced in Fusion. No, fine. Please don't use it now. I don't want to what happens, I confuse you. That is only for what happens, CRM actually. The CRM model will be using an item organization. Fine, please don't use it no, fine. because we used it in one of the places and then we got stuck actually. So please don't use it. Always use inventory or for creating your inventory or. So when I go and then say it, what happens, you'll not start to what happens, notify it, and then finally you will not land up in error. So don't do that now. So let me go on and create my master. So go there. I will now say G01 master. Oh, there is an item or huh? shipping. shipping. Shipping is also sensitive to the workday calendar as well as the ACP is also sensitive. MRP, ACP, fine. Anything which matches the demand supply. Your what happens the D mantra, your <coughs> demand planning, your capacity planning, your shop flow scheduling. And then ACP, all these modules are sensitive to workday calendars. Whereas what happens, not the supply chain management modules. The planning modules are sensitive, and then the shipping module is sensitive, but not your supply chain modules. You go there and then put it now, fine, go there. Organization code, what happens, I go there, give a zero, G01. Fine, G01, zero, the one I'm giving you code now, fine, go there. And then the business unit is what, you go there, you put the business unit, G01, and then give a tap. The business unit is going to come out now. So go there. And then here, the location, what happens? I will not put some location over here because what happens? There is a small issue over here. I will not make a change of this location. I will not make a change of this location. I click on search and I will not try to put something over here now. I click on search. Advanced. Uh, I will be having some other location. I will not put uh, what happens? I will not put this now. I will not put it now. I will not make a change later. This is not a correct way because of a small bug here, fine. or rather not a bug, what happens because of some restrictions on the vision instance, what happens, I'm going to do it. So click on next now, fine, go there, click on next. You must enter, okay, legal entity, I have not entered, no, fine, go there, click on it. Let me enter the legal entity, and drop it down, and then choose the legal entity, oh, you know, fine, go there, reward us. So the profit center business unit is also coming because what happens, we have put a tick mark on the assigned business unit, business functions, basically. There you have a tick mark on the below legal entity. So once when you have the below legal entity tick mark enabled, the profit center business unit is also going to come. I click on next now. That is for costing actually. I click on next now. You go further now. And on the next page, what happens? You go to the general and then you populate your schedule. So my G01 schedule will be there. G01 schedule. So I'm putting the schedule. It doesn't matter whether the schedule is going to work for four hours or 24 hours. It doesn't matter. Our inventory operations can be performed for the whole 24 hours actually. This is sensitive if your organization plant, if this is going to be a manufacturing plant. If you say the organization is a manufacturing plant, this is having some sensitiveness. And then along with that, all the planning modules, including the planning central are sensitive. And when you're learning it, at the time, what happens? We have to create exactly as per the working hours of the company. If the company is going to work from 
10 to 11 afterwards what happens is they are given a 15 minutes break for having uh, whatever is food and then during the rain the machines are switched off if the machines are switched off what happens there is no production at all the rain so in the case what happens is very sensitive because if you now see how much you are going to produce daily daily production comes into picture and so whatever there it will be sensitive but for pure inventory and then other supply chain models what happens it will not be having it needs only food and then uh, order management will be sensitive because for shipping it <laughs> item master organization right so how do you how do you say that this org is the master org anybody g01 master org this is the master org how you, how you can say this it is because what happens if you pop the same org it becomes a master org if you put the same org over here it becomes a master if you put some other org what happens this org becomes a child org fine that is the way what happens we distinguish a master and a child org now and then what happens? Always have the locator control determined at some point level. Remember, you cannot change later on. Now. If you have set up at some other level, either as not no control or predefined or dynamic, we cannot change the control levels. Remember, fine, go there and then put it on. The screen. You don't get it. And then go there. What is? You go to the lot of serial control here. What happens? You have got plenty of things to explain, but what happens? I'm not. Uh, this training is not for that actually. And then I go to the item sourcing defaults. And then what happens? You have one of the picking rule as a default picking rule. So the absolute last in first order, the industry standard. Now, fine, I'm going. And then make the sourcing a supplier. So by which what happens is this organization gets created. And give a save and close by which what happens is we are now coming creating the inventory org. No the first org is now ready. If you go there and then query on this, no fine, go G0 and then enter in. You know, see this one. So no, 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 let us not go on and get the child org also. Fine, click on plus and then let us not go on and create the child org. So I will now say G01. Fine. The child org. And so here, what happens? I will not say put G011 is the name. I'm giving it now. Fine, go there. Click on it and then G01 and then you tab now. So you go there. I'll now put A02 and then I'll now put some of the location over here. Fine, lock one and go to put it now. And then click on next now. Fine, I'm not going to get it. Legal ID has to be dropped down. So put the legal ID over here now. Fine, click on next now. And then populate any schedule. It doesn't matter as far as inventory is concerned now. Fine. In reality, what happens? We have to do exactly appropriate. Go to the general now. The general put the proper schedule here is okay. And then if I put G01 now, go there, give it time. It won't show both the orgs, fine. If you choose the master, fine. Now I am creating the child, I am not putting the master, this becomes a child. This is the way an org gets becomes a master or a child. Locator control determinant sub level is the one. And then you go to the third tab region and then have the absolute last in first order as a picking rule now. Fine. Is very important. Type is a supplier and go as well as. And then that's it. Fine. Give a save and close by which what happens? Is both the orgs are created. Go on and make a search. You can now find the master rock as well as the child rock. Now let us go on and get a location, then populate the location over here. Click on that. And then let us now go for the location. So manage percentage. Locations percentage in the entry now. We're now going to get the location now. Go down. <coughs> manage locations the one task now. Now let me create the location. And click on create. Here, what happens? The edit icon is now grayed out. Normally, what happens? You have to create a location and then associate the location with the inventory org. Since the edit icon is regular because of what happens, certain restrictions in the vision actually. In reality, it is not so. So what I'm doing is I'm doing in a ultra manner. First, I create the inventory org, then I create the location, and then put the location over there. That is not a correct way, but what to do? So click on create now. I'm not going to create. So click on create now. So I'm not going to get the location of fine. Go there. It's a G01 underscore lock underscore zero. Zero is the location I'm going to create now. Fine. Take it off of it now. Fine. Put in the code now. And then put in the description also. Fine. The remaining parameters are not mandatory at all. Fine. Leave it as such. Now, fine. If anything is coming as a mandatory, then put it. In reality, what happens? You have to populate all the addresses in a very proper manner. The addresses has to be put properly. And then here, what happens? These extra information is only for European zones, basically. Fine. Like Span, Spanish, and then French. Fine. You have got a lot of information. So when you happen to work on the European zone, what happens? The location creation is not an easy one. So you have to discuss with them on that way. And then they have added even what happens in Spain also. Fine. There are so many things are there. Don't do anything if it is a non-European zone, basically. Non-European zone based on nothing is there. Fine, go there. So click on what happens. The location zero is not done. Fine, go there. Here, what happens? I will not attach the inventory org also. Fine, go there. It's a G01. And then what happens? I go there. I will not choose the org. So I will not choose the master org. So here, location organization tie is mandatory. Fine. Which business process in EBIS, the location organization tie is mandatory. Huh? In EVIS also, what happens? This tie is mandatory. Fine. There is only one business process which needs this location organization tie. What is that? Anybody? Hey, anybody in the other room? No, in EVIS, in a supply chain. I'm telling about supply chain. Supply chain, one of the business process needs the tie. Fine. The location has to be tied to the inventory org, otherwise it will not work at all. 
come on not shipment at the time of at the time of requisition in i procurement uh, in the time of requisition in i procurement no who is this it is uh, something else no fine so you are now nearing the answer but not is not correct actually huh? not purchase orders is not a yes in iriso the location organization if they are not tied it will not work at all the internal requisition internal sales order right the must not right? remember fine iriso internal requisition internal sales order right for this what happens the location of here it is not so here what happens it has been made it is a mandatory one for everything now fine if we don't do it the pr to po automation will not work at all remember right the pr po automation will not work at all so that will fail so this location organization is going to maintain on something by which one of the first location is now getting created now so the zip code okay fine is not asked about the zip code so go there and then we'll now copy the drive or on the you know put the zip code is a mandatory one so i go there now give a tap so there is no what happens information which has come over here now and go there and now put the zip code so some fields are getting my automatically the city state everything is now coming up and go there get on something now so by which what happens i'm not completing it now <clears throat> so yeah you know the request will be submitted fine go there the zero to location is not tied to the master of fine click on yes now fine zero to similarly what happens will not go on the create our next one also fine what happens submitted so go on and create the next one fine click on create now fine now create the first location over there yeah. so is what the g01 underscore lot underscore one now the first location i'm getting in mind take copy of it now and put in the code <clears throat> and then put in the description now and go there and then populate your what happens inventory or fine go there g01 and then go there and now put the child over here For the first location, what happens? You know, put the child now, and then get what happens? You go there, and then populate your code now. Right, go there. This is a one zero zero two zero. In reality, we had to fill up the complete address very properly. You know, when you are working on the implementation, we had to complete. So this completes the location creation. Any doubt on this? No, I can't submit now. I will try to complete. Now we will now go to the manage inventory org and then change the locations over there. Now. So after this, what happens? You go and then query this location. Now, G zero one, and then you search now. So once when you make a search, what happens? Let me show you. And both the locations are coming. Right? Click on that. Come on, right? And then let us now go there and then go to the manage inventory org and then make a change of the location. So manage inventory and then org. So here, what happens? You go there, manage inventory organization. And this place, you query your organization. Find G zero and then enter it now. Find the query. Click on query. So we'll now open up the first one now. Find G zero one zero is the one. Find click on edit now. And then let me change this location. Location I am going to make a change. So G zero one and then you attack. The zero to location I am going to put it now. I am going to click on OK and then I am submitting it. And remember, if you make a mistake here also, you have already typed there and then here what happens? You are not associating it. Certain business form functions will fail in submitting. Remember, find some of the uh, some controls I am not exactly remembering it. Find serial control or lot control or something like that. Find some of them will fail it actually. So don't make this mistake at all. Find always whatever you are tied. What happens? It has to be given. Find new orders. Find click on save and close now. This is a must. Is is a, is a different from EBS basically. So the zero the location is not tied to the master. And then here what happens? We will now go there and then tie the next one. So click on save and close now. What happens? Click the save. Hey, come on. Save and close is not working. <clears throat> Cancel and then let me go in now. So let me go there. Zero one. Then click on edit now. Let us see the zero the location is not under the cancel. And then we'll go to the first location. Now, fine. Go there. Go to the first location. Then click on edit now. And then there also, what happens? They're going to make a change. Now, fine. Go there. G zero one. And then give it up. The first location. The first location. Now, child will be having this. Now, fine. Go there. So click on save now. Save and close. It's not working. Come on. What is this? Go there. And then click on edit. And then have a look at it. This okay? Fine. Done. So come on. Up it. So this activity is now completed. Fine. To create the job. Now, what happens? I will now create a job. What happens? I will not create a department as well as a position. This is not part of your training actually. Fine. Job is sufficient. Now, fine. Go there. I will not create a manage manage jobs for this training. What happens? We will not go there. We will manage jobs. So manage jobs is the one. And go there. Okay. Jobs are generic in nature, whereas positions are specific in nature. Like what happens? Junior manager. Junior manager is a job. Whereas junior manager electrical is a position. Junior manager mechanical is a position. Junior manager operations is a position. So jobs are generic in nature. Positions are specific based upon the work they are doing in it. So here, what happens? This is more than sufficient for creating a user actually. If I go there, manager, I'll let me go and create it. And remember, job is a reference data set object, and so what happens? Always create a common set. So once when we create a common set, what happens? It can be associated to any BU. Any BU can function it. So always create everything on a common set. As for a supply chain is concerned, supply chain has got only three objects: one is the job, one is the department, and one is the location. So these three things always create in the common set, and so what happens? We do not have to worry about the security part. 
So here, what happens? We don't have any uh, much of an importance as far as security is concerned. So G zero one underscore J M. I'm giving it now. You take a copy of it and then put on the code. Now. Fine. Code is a unique identifier for every job. Remember, fine. So what happens? You have a distinct code for each and every job. Now. Two jobs can be same, but code should not be same for this. Code code is a unique identifier of every job. Okay, go next now. You know, go to the next stage now. So here, what happens? You go there, make it as a full time, and then here, what happens? You make it as a regular. Now. And remember. There are two levels of approvals. Are there two methods of approval? One is what the position hierarchy. One is the supervisor hierarchy in EBS. Here there are six methods. Are there. there are six methods are there for which what happens? There are multiple levels on which it is going to work. Now, fine. Anyhow, I am not giving it because I am not going to demonstrate it. You know, fine. So the job level approvals, the position level approvals, the supervisor level approvals will be using these levels actually. So in a full fledged training, what happens? You will be learning it now, fine. So I am not putting it there. You know, the remaining are not mandatory. Fine. Here the same team will be doing it now, fine. Uh, for others, it's not required. And go there. Click on what happens. You give a save and then give a submit by which what happens. The job gets created. Click on save and then submit. Whenever you have a submit button, we have to submit it explicitly. Otherwise, what happens? It will not be working. Now find another. Click on it. So there is no done. So the job is now created. Go there. That's it. Go there. The department and the positions are not form uh, not forming part of the training process. So there is only for the full review. Now let us now go on and get our employee. So click on okay now. Go there. We are now going to get employee. So click on done now. So for employee creation, what happens? Always use manage users. Fine. As far as supply chain is concerned, fine. This task is one. Do not create anything via what happens your security console. So manage users is one. So go there. And then go to the manage users now. Fine. Create your employee. So click on plus now, and then I'm going to create employee. So here, what happens? The last name is what EMP, and then the first name is what G zero two underscore. Giving it now, fine. And then the email, I'm going to give it now, fine. Go there. So let me put what happens. Some email now, fine. Go there. I will not say uh, because if the email is already used, it will not throw an error. Now actually, apps. Dot. No. Not. Gmail. Dot. Com. I don't know whether I have used it or not. Fine. Go there. Click on it. Otherwise, you know, say this has been used by some other user. Fine. Go there. Go to the username. And then here, what happens? I will not say G zero two underscore EMP is my username. Now, fine. Go there. And then now go down. <clears throat> and then here, what happens? In this place, what happens? I will not make it as an employee now. So the moment you make it as the employee, the legal employer comes into picture. Fine, G zero two is the one. Fine, give it that. Give it the money. So G zero two. Click on search now. Legal employee. Fine. It has to come because what happens? We are already given the legislative data group. Fine. The legislative data group is now given. What happens? LDG is now given. What happens? It has to come now. Legal employee. Why is not coming? I'm not sure about it. I'm going to go there and then make a check of it. Now. So now go there. <clears throat> Click on it. And then go to the search. So manage, manage uh, legal entity. Find her CM information. Manage legal entity CM information. The one. So query my G zero one. And then click on search now. So here you click on the underscore. And then you go to the payroll unit now, statutory unit now. So the legislative data group is already there actually. This is the one which is a prerequisite for this number G zero one. So legal entity is there. So here also what happens? The position synchronization, everything is perfect now. Why it's not coming? G zero two is the one. Okay, give it now. And not coming. Delete it and then drop it down. Legal employer. Click on search now. G zero two. And then click on search now. Oh God! I will not put E zero two. This is now coming. E zero two is coming. G zero one now. G zero one. Oh, I made a mistake actually. I made a G zero two actually. Man, there is a mistake I made. Man. G zero one actually, <laughs> and then go there. I will not put G zero one over here. I will give a tap. And then afterwards, what happens? The job is important. I go there. Give a tap. Positions and what happens? Your departments are not important actually. Fine, go there. So this much is sufficient. I will not populate any department actually. Fine. Department is only what happens? Uh, it's only informative as far as uh, what happens. Your supply chain is concerned now. Fine, go there. Whether I don't know whether I have created the uh, what happens? A zero to department or not. It doesn't have any functionality as such. Well. But when you create a position, department is mandatory. Remember, 
for position department is mandatory but for user department is not mandatory and then if you have a supervisor we can even pop in the supervisor over here you know so we go there and get this one so this is now complete fine if a seven close by which what happens your user g02 underscore emp with the apps dot nana this mail id what happens no one can click on seven close and remember always create numbers a record with the value of person a uh, person do you already exist enter a unique value G O G zero one no I I have no making a mess of it no G zero one G zero one actually G zero one must be M P so let me put some other uh, N for now at the Gmail dot com because I have to what I'm saying the notification also over there I'm going to save and close now and then I say ah ha ha the email that you have provided is already in use now fine you can doesn't matter anyhow i'm not going to check for the emails basically so what i do is g01 underscore emp at the rate gmail dot i'm not going to do an approval on the things in this, in this uh, training actually i click on seven close now so my which one g01 underscore emp is now getting created now fine over there a record with the value person do already exist enter unique value user name already how come cancel it so let me go on and query it now fine go that click on the query now fine g01 enter in now i think is there actually i'm on there so let me go on and create it now fine go that was so the last name is emp and the first name is what g01 underscore email id is what g01 underscore emp at the rate gmail.com so you go there and then the username is what g01 underscore emp so it's an employee you know go there legal employee is what g01 and then your name now is g01 and then your name job is g01 and then your name it's all taking up now and go there and that's sufficient now and go there plus and then click on save and close now <coughs> Think that's okay now. So G zero one was called EMP is not coming now. So this completes the user creation. Now fine, we are going to have only one user creation for the training assets. Now fine. So if you go and then make a search for it now, we will be getting now. So these are the legal employee. Fine, go there. Legal users. So I know that. Now what happens? Uh, I have to assign these roles basically. Fine, go there. Let us now go there and then assign the roles. Now fine. Click on that now. Fine, go and assign the roles. <clears throat> Click on that now. So let us go there. Go to the security console and then assign the roles. Fine. Click on it. Go there. Go to the more. <clears throat> and then here, what happens? Go to the security console. Now. Security console. And then we go to assign these roles. So this uh, message is coming. Doesn't matter. Fine. Go there. And then let me query my user. Now fine. Go there. It's a G zero one. And then entry. Now fine. Go there. I'm going to query it now. Open up the user. And then let me assign the roles. First of all, let me reset the password. Now go there. I will know manually. So I have the habit of putting welcome one two three in all small small. And welcome one two three. And then go down. Welcome one two three. And go down bonus. And then click on reset password now. I'm going to give a save also for this now. And go down bonus. And then click on edit and then add the roles. And go down and go down the roles. And click on add role now. So here the first role is what application implementation console now. And then go there. And then take copy and put on small. A is the role I'm going to give it now. This guy can now very well perform what all the What's called your setups basically. Application implementation consult is the one. I'm choosing it and then I'm choosing the ORA now. I click on add roles. And then next is IT security manager now. Go there. And then choose IT security manager over there now. So IT security manager is the one. So on this, what I'm going to choose the ORA over there now. <clears throat> click on it. And then click on add role membership. And all that. Go there. And then employee is a generic role, is an abstract role actually. Man, always add this abstract role from so that many facilities are basically possible on this now. I'm going to choose the employee as an abstract role. <clears throat> click on it. And then click on add, add role membership. Click on it. Click on it. And then afterwards, what happens? The procurement requester is required for what happens? Your requisition creation. I'm not going to do this now, man. I'm not going to get any. These three rules are required for requisition creation. Here, what happens? I'll now create a simple purchase order. Then I'll now pass it on. I'm not going to do it now. It's got a lot of functionalities basically. I'm not doing it now. So let us go there and then make the inventory manager over there now. 
inventory manager. So inventory manager of Aura is there. And then select the inventory manager of Aura. Click on add. Go to space. Receiving agent. I am going to give it now. We are going to receive it. So we are going to see a P2P push also. Procure to pay push basically. So for which one of them? Like receiving agent actually. Receiving agent is not for that. So receiving agent of Aura is not done. I click on add room push it. Go to this place. Claros manager. You're going to choose it, my friend. Go there. Click on it now. And then <clears throat> what is the question somebody asked somebody? So warehouse manager, Aura. <clears throat> Click on add role membership now. Warehouse manager is added. So this is required for what happens? So putting away the material into the inventory. All human resources is not required. Buyer is no more required because what happens? It is not contained on the procurement manager itself. No? Buyer is no more required. So we go there and then give the procurement manager over here now. And go there, paste it over here. Now. Procurement manager, I'm going to give it now. So procurement manager of Vora, I'm going to give it now. Click on it now. Choose it and then click on add rule membership now. Oh, getting recorded now. Okay, recording is share. Whatever. Procurement manager is not there. Accounts payables manager is required now. Fine. Accounts payables manager. Let me go there. Because we are going to see from the accounts payables. So accounts payables manager Vora. Go there. It's accounts payables manager. Uh, the Vora one, I'm choosing it now. Accounts payables specialist. Accounts payables specialist of Vora. I'm adding it now. <clears throat> and the next is what? Accounts payable supervisor. Supervisor. So accounts payable supervisor, I'm going to add it now. Your BI. Accounts payable supervisor is there now. Accounts payable invoice supervisor is there. I don't know whether uh, the one or not. It's okay, fine. I'm not choosing it now. Fine. Click on it. I'm coming on this one. Accounts payable supervisor. Accounts payable super VI. Ah, it's not coming. I don't know why it's so long. Mm. Not coming. Accounts payable supervisor. Okay, you leave it as it's not coming. No, product data steward is required for creating an item actually. And take away. No, go there. Uh, accounts payable manager and. Against payables? Manager. manager. No, manager is already added. Uh, what happens? We added manager as well as what happens? Yeah, specialist also. So, PA payables, PA way. Payable supervisor, right? Payable space. Payable space. Payable. And then space, no? Supervisor will come. No, supervisor I need. Accounts payable specialist. Specialist has been no specialist is not added. No, you see, accounts payable specialist is not added because it's not added means it will be coming. It doesn't matter. Fine, we are not going to do too much of activity on the on the financial side. Click on that. So go there. Click on add. Go there. So this is not done. Fine. Supplier manager is required for creating a supplier actually. So let me go there and then add this role now. Supply manager. The supply manager I'm adding now. Supply manager is required for doing it. Fine. Go there. Go there. Click on it. So supply manager over there. Thank you. Add rule membership. <coughs> go there. And then supplier administrator is not required. General account is required for opening the periods actually. And go there. Take operator and then put the general account. General accountant. So general accountant of Vora. General accountant. Copy then this one. This Vora and now adding it. And then next one is what? We go and then general accounting manager. General accounting manager. Certain activities are basically what has been disallowed in this vision instance actually. So general accounting manager. So for which what happens? We have some rules are there. Go there. Then those rules also has to be added now. 
then only what happens on the vision, it will work now, actually. If you go there, you go to the procurement, you know how, what happens here. Uh, rules, once again. There is one file called rules. Rules in vision. So there is a file called rules in vision now. Fine, this also has to be added now, fine, to the user now. You go to the rules in vision now, and it does not add those rules. <coughs> Store the roles. So here, what happens? Uh, GSC is CM UA developer. Fine. GSC is CM UA developer. Right there. It is only for the vision actually. Fine. This is not true for everything now. So it's only for the vision actually. Go there. So uh, GSC. Fine. Go there. Let us now remove it now. Fine. Shift and then the end and then remove it. Fine. GSC SCM. So the UA developer has to be added now. Fine. Go there. GSC SCM UA developer and adding it now. This is required only for vision actually. Right? Only for the vision is required. So go there and see this now. Not this one. Next is what? OU SCM role now. Go there. What is the OU SCM role now? OU SCM role. OU SCM role. This has got a lot of uh, things to do. Fine. That is only for the vision actually. Fine. This is required. The vision, what happens? We add this role and click on add role. Okay. And then afterwards, what happens? We go for the one GSC uh, idea role. Fine. GSC idea role. GSC idea role. <coughs> add this role now. So click on add role. Click on OK now. And then after the final one is a GSC, what happens? Role for SCM O to C now. Fine. All the cash. We have a special role now. GSC, GSC, GSCM, O to C now. Uh, what is it? GSC role for SCM. GSC role for SCM. These are all custom made roles, actually. GSC role for SCM, O to C. Last one. So use the one and then choose it and then click on that. So when you're working on vision, what happens? You add these roles or so it won't be getting any problem as such. So this is on the rules and vision now actually. So now we go there and then have a look at it now. No doubt. So this completes what happens the user creation of and click on done now. And then click on save and close, maybe which what happens here now. Even reset the passwords, and then what happens? We have to go and then run the synchronization concurrent actually. So one when the concurrent is run, what happens? Your user, all the setup information will be passed on to the transaction systems actually. And click on it, and then it will now go on and do it. So click on more and then you go to the schedule the process and then run this import user role. Now. This is a one time activity. So once I do it, what happens? Whatever you set up on the security console will be available on your this thing immediately. Actually. Otherwise, what happens? The system has got a inbuilt, what happens? Your syncing mechanism actually, you import user role. The inbuilt syncing mechanism will not automatically sync it, but this is a force syncing actually. Go there. So let us now force syncing it now. Go there. Click on it, click on OK. And then click on OK. <clears throat> and then we go to submit it now. Click on submit. So this is now getting completed now. Click on submit. Uh, it's okay, fine. Go there. So wait for the concurrent to complete. Now we can very well log it with our username. So wait for the concurrent. Now we are now going to go into the procurement setup side away now. Fine, go there. So procurement setups. Now the first four steps have been bypassed. Beautifully bypassed. Now it's no more required at all. It's a very complex operation actually, as far as categories is concerned. So they have removed it. So for which what happens? I will tell you about what you had to do on this. We had to do only what? There is only one activity which you had to do now. And go there. What so there has been bypassed now. So let me work for some time in the system because since it's running now. And go so you go there and then I don't know. You go to this place now. Click on it. Click on that. Come out of it now. So that is now bypassed and then it has been made so excellently, nicely actually. And go there. It's called manage functional area catalogs. So go there, go to the task now. Go there, go to the place. Now, you ensure that what happens, you have one catalog on the functional areas of inventory, and then one on purchasing, and then one on order entry. There are three areas which are required now. Go there. So you can see there are so many are already created now. And go there, click on it now. So here in this place, all these things are created now. So if you go down, down, and then see this now. 
uh, the functional area will be coming actually fine with that so they have already created everything fine here there is no need for to create when you have to see the planning is there the product uh, repository is nothing but inventory the purchasing is there and then you will be having one on order entry also uh, one on order entry also so we can only create only one for example if you go on and try to create one on order entry again now and go and click on create and then if it drop down and then choose the order entry over here now click on the one error now it is actually coming up but what happens it is not correct actually fine it will it may even throw some error for every functional area have only one catalog the creation of a catalog and don't do it and do a cancel so in the vision it is all get created and so what happens there is no need for us to create anything at all in a fresh instance what happens there will not be any entry in which what happens you go on and click on create you give a catalog as well as a category also right the this is what a catalog and category and go the check on that. and this is purely for reporting and this reporting is a very excellent reporting actually so category wise we can very well report the stock as well as its cost also so it will be using it will be used to a great extent actually so the four steps are replaced with one manage functional and area catalogs manage functional area catalogs the fifth one is a specify supplier numbering and go there you take a copy of it and then what happens you want to specify the numbering now on the water now so click on share share so manage specify supplier numbering specify percentage supplier percentage nmd percentage enter now specify supplier numbering the map click on it now. so we are going to specify the supplier number and then again what happens is do not make any changes to this is a one time activity and then when you keep on fiddling around this what happens it will not even create a supplier other right? so please don't fiddle on this now on the test instance don't do it in the real instance what happens is talk to the client and then accordingly set it up i'll not give a cancel manage procurement agents i'll be coming to a bit later now fine i'll not be doing it immediately so go there and then what happens this is the one where what happens is so much of approvals are basically have manage task configuration for procurement i remember this is a place where the financials will be using the approvals you might have seen an invoice approval via task configuration actually whereas here what happens we have a different place to do it in 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 this thing what happens this is a very easy one whereas for the other modules it is very tough actually go there i will not put up this one now and go there place this now and go there click on so manage task configuration for procurement now there is some mistake now go there manage percentage task percentage conf percentage right prc percentage and task configuration of the government must go there so this area is not our cup of tea at all fine go there it's called B bpm business process management and here what happens you have to choose your workflow on the way in ebis what happens we have a two there are many many workflows are there in ebis now for acquisitions as well as purchase orders fine they are all represented by these ones so here what happens what you have to do is you have to go and then what happens you know go for requisition of goods requisition and then give a query now you know see the requisition approvals okay requisition approvals the last one i was choosing i am not choosing it now you will be getting lot and then allow all the defaults now fine the defaults have been set beautifully and then if at all you wanted to make a change then only what happens you have to go on and edit and then do it otherwise what happens don't do anything at all sir one doubt sir one doubt Ah, is a is a ah, in a catalog ah EBS the category alone ah sir default category set. Yes, default exactly. Catalog. Yeah, the catalog of fusion is equivalent to what happens the category set of EBS basically is very correct. Right, the catalog of fusion is equivalent to category set of EBS basically. Right? That has been very beautifully simplified actually. Yeah. And then the default catalog is nothing but a default category set. <coughs> They are all same. now these things do not modify and similarly what happens if at all you want you modify only the notifications to whom it has to go no? this portion you modify it otherwise apart from that what happens do not modify it. and then what happens for financials they will not go to the rules and then they will not write the rules whereas we will never write the rule at all here in this place we will never write the rule no? a small break now so welcome back after the break now fine we'll now go on and share my screen actually so here in the rules it has got plenty of things to do fine please do not write your approvals via this no fine approvals has to be written in a different place basically okay this is not the cup of tea and so what happens in this place on the main task area fine if at all you want to modify you edit and then modify finally submit it otherwise what happens don't touch this at all fine 
This is not our real work actually, man. What I'm saying. How to come out of it here? Is there any way to come out? There is no done button also here. No. They got it. Okay, leave it as is. No matter what else. We are in this place. <coughs> BPM of just fine. Let me close it now. So manage task configuration by procurement. If at all your approval requirements are complex, don't touch it at all. Remember, don't touch it. If your approval requirements are complex, then what happens? You touch it. And otherwise, don't touch it at all. We have one uh, one of my student who is working in Oracle. They have used this one for approvals. Writing complex approvals. What happens? Even debugging also will be very difficult. Actually, whereas we have a simpler mechanism for approvals. Actually, it's not a it's not an area for which Oracle is. What is placement? What is now? This is the one where what happens? Uh, Baskar will be explaining it to you. <coughs> this is where what happens? He'll be creating this now. In EBIS, we have a module called SLA. So SLA has got pointers. <coughs> it says what you pick up from the org, <coughs> the middle account. <coughs> you pick up from the org parameters, the IPD, the <coughs> what happens? The accrual, the variance, everything. What happens? It will know how pointers. Are. So it doesn't have any accounting at all. So SLA do not have any accounting. And so what happens? Even if you don't buy any license for SLA in EBIS, we can very well work upon because all the pointers are already set. From that, they have to take up the accounting as far as for your financial accounting is concerned. Whereas in this place, what happens? In the inventory do not have any accounts at all. And there is no accounts at all. So on the what happens on the tab and tab this is the area where what happens? You have to go on the set up everything. So manage subledger accounting options, fine with that. So I must say manage percentage, sub percentage, let percentage, OPT percentage, and then manage subledger accounting options. So manage subledger accounting options, the area where what happens, we are going to what happens at everything. So for example, I will not go on that, put my ledger over here now. And I click on search now. G01, sorry. G01. So G01, I'm putting it now. I go there, click on search, you know. <clears throat> So once when I put it, click on search now. You will now find all the subledgers coming up below this. So for each and everything they had to set up. So for example, if you go to the purchasing area, <coughs> where is the purchasing? The purchasing is there in the bottom now. What else? And then if you go and then click on the accounting options on this now, find go there, click on it now. <coughs> so here we have one default accounting as well. Purchasing tab default. So this says from where we have to pick up the accounts. So fine. Anyhow, what happens? We have to so specify the account without specifying the account. What happens? It's not going to work at all. So we'll be specifying the accounts actually. The account numbers are specific. But we can even have our own also. So that will be taught in a, I think uh, probably uh, uh, Bhaskar will be teaching about how to create your own tab actually. The tab and tab. This is called transaction account definition now. Fine. That will be taught by you. So that is where what happens? The SLA will be picking up all the accounts and then it will be populating on this. So if you don't know, don't touch it. And then I will tell you about where to populate for a default accounting. For the purchasing tab default accounting, I will tell you about where exactly to put out this. Account. So this is on what happens, manage subledger accounting options. Now manage payment terms. So you know it, you know about how to create on all and go there. I don't have a look at it now. Manage payment terms. So manage payment terms. <laughs> So you create your own payment terms from personal. So you know about how the, the first discount, second discounts, third discounts, and all the installments and the discounts, everything is there. And you know it. And then you can even add the set assignments over here. So the payment terms is a what happens a reference data set object within which what happens. It can be assigned to multiple sets also, multiple reference data sets it can be assigned. You have a cancel. Create carrier. The carrier is an important activity. Fine. What happens in EBUS is not so. Here, what happens is a very important one. I go there. We will now go on and get the carrier actually. The carrier is normally associated only with the transportation management. But what happens in, in, in Fusion? Uh, what happens if you don't have a carrier? You will not be able to ship the product at all as far as order management is concerned. Fine. So, have one carrier at least. And then I'm going to get a carrier. And I'll also say G01. Fine. Carrier. So what else? Fine. Go there. And then what happens? Give a save. The plus tick mark will be coming now. Fine. You can save now. So afterwards, what happens? The plus is coming. I click on plus now. And then I'm going to add that. So how you're going to service it now? Fine. Go there. I will now say second day here. Yeah. And then the motor transport is here. Yeah. 
and then I'm going to associate to which org I'm going to do. You know, that on this. So here, what happens? We are not conducting a full field training. As I will be associating one to one org now. I'm going to search that. So let me associate the one child dogs with again. The G zero one one, and then I'll give a search now. I'm going to associate to the child dog. Sorry, I'm going to click on apply and then click on okay now. So I will know now. So I will now create one carrier that's sufficient. The next topic is what freight terms now. Fine. On the purchase order, it will be written that who is going to pay the freight, whether the supplier is going to pay or we are going to pay, whether the cash on delivery or whatever it is. And then this is nothing but what? It is nothing but an information there. It does not have any functionality as such. It's not having any functionality. It is just information. The payable clerk will now look at this freight terms and accordingly he may honor the invoice of supplier or he may even reject. So let us say the supplier has to pay the freight. That is what is done there. And then the supplier is now providing a freight invoice also. He will not reject it because the PO says what? It is only you only have to pay. So it is a manual verification process, and then it is not an automatic verification process. So the freight is a manual verification process. You go and then add whatever the company is now having in it. I will not say look up code. I will not say G01. Sub pays freight. So go there and then choose this now. Take cover it now. And then it means this now, <clears throat> and then with the description is also. So put the appropriate on and then save it. So this can be populated on your purchase orders with you, <coughs> whatever you are discussing on this. So click on save and close by which what happens? The freight terms is now completed. Now what happens? The profiles. The profiles has got a very minimal value here. You don't have much of a what happens? Importance over here now. If you go there and then paste it over here and then enter now and the large purchase order. <coughs> manage purchasing profiles, manage purchasing profiles. <coughs> manage purchasing profiles. See, it has got a lot of things. My loader commit says, if you go there, it's not much of an importance basically. It is only for technical commit actually. The default procurement view. We can even make one of them as a default procurement view. And similarly, we go on and see this file. None of the profiles are having any big importance. Whereas in EVIS, what happens, the profile plays a vital part. And there are certain things which have to be set properly. Here it's not so. Even if you don't set anything, what happens, the module will be working very functional, very beautiful. Right? It's only from some GGB activities. Right? It's not a very big part. Now, in EVIS, what happens, uh, we have uh, the requisitions are starting in number. And then what happens, the purchase orders are starting in number. Here, what happens, even the agreements can start in a different number. Actually. That has been enhanced, actually. Right? Requisitions, agreements, and then purchase orders. So you go there. Manage procurement document numbering. Some mistake or doc. It is a document actually. D O C U M E N D document numbering. So manage procurement document numbering. You want to go there. So we can have the start number for each and everything. Fine. Click on plus now. Fine. Go there. I will now go and then get a start number for this. Fine. Go there. I will now make it for requisition. Fine. The G U. The thing is what G zero. G zero one one will have. I will now say it is now starting on thousand. Okay, so Huh? It's a requisition. So requisition is coming. I go there. It's the G zero G zero one. I go there. I go there. So since it is not a what happens a, a legal do document, a BU is now getting associated. I then go there. Click on this. I will not give a plus now. Right? Next is what I will not put an agreement on this. I go there. So if you have a plus now, I go there. So the next one is what I will not make it as an agreement. Now. Purchase agreement. I will make it now. Purchase agreement. And then here I will not go there. G zero one of the one. I will give a tab now. So here, you can even have a prefix and suffix. It is not possible in the EBS at all. EBS, you cannot have a prefix and suffix. So you go there. Agreements are starting in two thousand. And then go there. And then click on plus now. And then it may add the purchase orders over there. So purchase orders are getting added now. So I'm going to add it. So purchase orders. Fine. Go there. So G01. You can now see the determinant is going to be early now. Fine. So your purchase order is a legal document upon which what happens? The supplier can even go to the court of law. And then what happens? You can even claim if we are not paid in. So we can give a different start number for your requisitions, your agreement, as well as the orders. No, fine. They can even have a different start numbers. And then you can even have a prefix and suffix included on this. Give a save and close by which what happens is not completed. Sir, uh, yeah. can we have a prefix as alpha numeric? Any alpha? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very much possible. No, fine. Alpha numeric is very much possible for both prefix and suffixes. This feature is not available in EBIS and on the purchasing group. You can only have numeric numbers. Okay, okay thanks. Then line type. 
line type has got lesser importance as far as EBIS is concerned here. It has been enhanced actually. The line type has been enhanced actually. If you go on the hard way, so purchasing line types now. So here, what happens in EBIS, we have got only what happens your goods and services based purchases basically. And then it doesn't have anything. Here, what happens? We can even have the category based line types. And then what happens? The match approval level as well as invoice match options have been added only. If you go there, match approval levels is 283 only. And then invoice match option is what your order or receipt point was that this has been added only. And we're going to have a look at what exactly this is tomorrow. And then we can even have the receipt close tolerance coming in the picture over here. That is also possible. So line type has got an enhanced one actually. And then we normally use only goods or services. The remaining ones, if you want to have a naming, you will not do it. Otherwise, what happens? We use the goods only. So we have a match approval levels, you have the invoice match options, we have a receipt close tolerance, as well as we can even have a category also. Right. They will all be defaulting onto the onto the onto the orders basically. So once when you use this goods actually, and this is a very high level of defaulting. And so what happens? The moment the line type is populated, it will not pick up only from this place, and then it will now ignore the suppliers defaulting actually. So give a cancel now. I'm not doing anything at all. And then if you go to the match document styles now basically, right? This is a document style. So document style has got what a lesser importance when compared to what happens with EBIS basically. EBIS has got a plenty of importance as well. Document style has got a lesser importance. So go there and then go to the manage document styles now. So here, what happens? Any style when you choose it now, right? If you go and then go to the manage standard style, and then here more than anything now. So here it has got a name only. If you see the purchase order is not referenced as this. We are not creating for Birla. We will not say Birla purchase order. Birla agreement. Like that, what happens? Birla contract purchase agreement. Birla blanket purchase agreement. Like this, what happens? We can only give a name. Apart from that, it doesn't have any much of a function. Whereas in EBIS, the document style has got a greater one because what happens? We have an AME there. So approval management engine is going to use the document style to a great extent actually. Right? And that will be having a lot of workflows associated. And then that will not supersede the line type actually in EBIS. Here it is not so. Fine. Here it has got a very, very less important than that. There is no need for us today. You can choose a standard style and then what happens? You change the names and then leave it as well. Not much of importance. Whether here in the, on the blanket purchase agreement, whether the price breaks are allowed or not, that is one thing which has been added. Fine. Apart from that, we don't have much of a thing on this. So document style has got a lesser importance, whereas document type has got a greater importance in fusion. Life cycle phases have been introduced in Fusion actually. Fine. Here, what happens? This will be used with the PIM module actually. It is not used by the PIM module. It is not used by the inventory module actually. Manage life cycle phases now. Manage life cycle phases now. So, here, what happens? Let me add one such life cycle now. Sequence, I will not put cell type 12 now. I will now say G01 production. The one I'm putting it on, I'll take, I'll take off it now. And then put in the face code now. And then draw the type as production. This has got a significant uh, what happens, uh, thing only for the pin module. So if a customer has uh, what happens, uh, gone for a pin, then it will be having a return. But here, what happens for an item creation, the life cycle phase is a mandatory field. And so, what happens, uh, we have to create at least one. Here, only what happens alphanumeric or underscore is all fine. Go there. Uh, space is not allowed. Essentially. How come? You know, save and close is not done. Or not? It is saved. Actually. Some restrictions are like that. Item status has, has been enhanced when compared to EBIS. So, in EBIS, what happens when you choose an active state or inactive status, there are only 10 status attributes which are associated. Like what happens, talk about it. Transactable, purchasable, and invoiceable, and then what happens? The costing enabled, likewise, what happens? There are 10 such things that works. So we have only those 10 available on the item statuses here that has been beautifully enhanced. So item status is enhanced actually. So go to the places, go to the manage item statuses now. Here, what happens? If you go on and choose the active, you cannot see more than 20 attributes are clubbed together actually. It is very nice. Beautifully done. Everybody appreciates this now actually. So more than 20, 25 attributes, I mean, what happens use it. And normally what happens, we use only an active or an inactive. Fine. We don't use other ones at all. Fine. Normally, fine. somebody has you no know, use a development, fine. doesn't matter. Fine. But very rarely, you will not create item status. So the default ones of active and inactive are extensively used as far as item creation is concerned. And this is having an enhancement when compared to e-based business. 
Now, this is basically the financial options section. Right? The managed common options for payables and procurement of the financial options. Now, we will take out of it and then we'll put it over there and then enter it now. <coughs> so, manage common options for payables and procurement of the one. And then choose your business unit over there, right? G01 when you attack. So here, what happens? My liability account, inventory number, what is the number? 1000, 1001, 1002. 1002 is a liability, 100% correct. What is your name? Vengadesh. So 1002 is a liability account. And since the module itself is a liability module, what happens? We can put all the things as the same account also. It doesn't matter. As long as what happens, you're putting the same account, it will not give any, any problem. Only on the mandatory fees, I'm filling it up. Otherwise, what I was uh, Bhaskar would have taught you about how to set up these accounts. You would have even uh, taken different different accounts for this. So you go there, paste it over here, find over The financial options, the common options acts as umbrella between what I was uh, purchasing and payable so on basically. Mm -hmm. Okay, go there, what us fine, go there. And then here, what happens? I'm putting it on this now, fine, go there, what us. And then in EBIS, on the financial options, we have both the ship to as well as bill to also. So the ship to has got no meaning, and so what happens? They have removed the ship to, and then only the bill to has to be provided. G01, and then I'm going to put the first location over there. Location. So ship to has got no meaning, so they removed it, and then pushed it into the, what happens? Your purchasing activity on this. So this much is sufficient. The remaining would have been taught by what happens, your automatic officers, currency conversion, expense accruals, all these things would have been, it has been taught by what happens, the Bhaskar. So we are now giving a minimal one, and then this acts as umbrella between purchasing and payables basically. So common options is not complete. Now you go to configure requisitioning business function. Go there. Take top right now. Okay, go there. Go to the configure requisitioning business function and orders. So we'll now take it up. So we're going to go to the configure requisition business function. Click on it now. So we have to choose our BU and then do it now. The BU is what? G. G01 business unit. And then click on OK. So the default delivered to location organization. Default delivered to organization. G01. Give a tab now. That will be a default one now. I will not choose the child or. And do not do master at all. Fine. Don't purchase anything for the master at all. Line tape is good. So you pay. Fine. Leave alone these defaults. No, fine. Do not uh, fiddle around these defaults because what happens is very nicely set. And then do not go for the DFF at this. What happens at this? Configure requisitioning business function. Don't go there. You do it on the individual requisitioning area, not this one. Fine. So in the purchasing, which is your client actually, fine. the default procurement BU. Fine. This is a service provider actually. I am in a requisitioning business unit, which is a client BU actually. And then this is a service provider BU. The ship to location comes over here now. Go there, G01. And then no. So the ship to location has been shifted from that. What happens? Your financial options into the configure requisitioning business function. And that's it. Give a save and close by which what happens? The requisitioning business function is now fully configured. Give a save and close. The next one is what? You go there and then see configure procurement business function. And configure procurement business functions. Go there, take copy. So you're taking a screenshot on each and everything immediately, huh? <laughs> it's so fast. <laughs> this is very fast. Configure procurement business function is the one. So in this one, what happens? You choose your view now. G01 business unit. Thank you. Okay now. The payment terms, I'm not dropping and then I'm choosing it now. Fine. That will be they all be defaulting, you know. By 2 by 10 will be there now. Fine. 2 by 10. Hey, come on. Do a search now. See, uh, why nothing is coming? Can anybody tell me? Huh? You say hello, really. It's not coming. Fine. It is a reference data set object now. Fine. Can you tell me on that, on that one? And what is happening on this now? <laughs> So let me go there and then query on this one. So click on setup and maintenance now. So let me go to the payment terms directly now. And click on it. Click on search now. I will now say manage payment terms.
manage payment cards. Let me query my first payment terminal. So I will now open up on the ADP. This is not coming in my view at all. Why? This is the area which is causing the problem. You had to add your one of your RDS actually. So add your RDS and go there. So G zero two G zero one RDS and that's it. Now it will come. So it has to be attached. So this is all the problems when you are using RDS actually. In reality, I don't understand why these things are required actually. Go there. Now what happens? You go there and then two and then give a tap. It has to come. So if the RDS is not added to your payment terms, those will not appear on your view at all. <coughs> so this is the one. Now what happens? Shipping method. Fine. We have one shipping method. No, fine. Go there. G zero one is not coming. So it's not there. Fine. Carrier is there. G zero one. Interesting. And remember, in order management, it's a mandatory field, and if you don't have that shipping method created, you will not be able to ship the product at all in order management. Fine. There, there is not so in EBS. No, fine. EBS is only an optional field. So here, what I was, I go there. G zero one, then you tap. So I'm now going to complete. G zero one, we just created something like carrier, and then afterwards we have attached the what I was, mean, the shipping methods also on the bottom, and then associated with all also. Yeah, the shipping method also. Transit, right terms, you go there, and then choose. You are having this one. So this will now be printed on the purchase order. It does not have any functionality. The FOB is there. Fine. Up to what point it is going to be free now? Fine. Destination the one. So up to destination, whatever expenses are incurred belongs to the supplier actually. Fine. If you say origin, what happens? The moment the supplier ships from America, from there what happens? The transit charges you have to pay, the octroi, the customs duty, the excise duty, everything etc. You have to pay. So it's what else? And go there. So we always prefer destination. The supplier always prefer origin, and there is a price difference between these two things. So buyer managing the transportation is only for what he is going to do the transportation. Say that he has only managed the transportation. Go there. The buyer. Now tell me the buyer field is required only on one business process in EBS now. Find which one it is. Anybody has got any idea? Huh? In purchasing, which 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 business function? Not requisition. The buyer is required only for VMI. Vendor manager inventory needs a buyer. And then here for a PR to PO automation, we need the buyer. No, no. When you want to convert the PR to PO, the buyer information is required. Right. The buyer is required for PR to PO actually. And anybody knows what is the significance of inventory or? Is a big significance actually. The inventory or here is, has got a big significance. Let's go on and have a look at it now. So I'm in the question procurement time. Inventory or. You can see one file called inventory org and financial options. Inventory org and financial options. I'll let me open it up. Inventory org and financial options the one I'm opening it up. Inventory org and financial options. Let us say my business is like this now. I am now manufacturing monitor for which what happens? I need a picture tube, I need a motherboard, I need a monitor cover. And these are the three components which are there. So these components put together, we are now manufacturing monitor. So let us say all the three components I'm buying from a supplier actually. Hey, class like that. Or a R M call go play. R M video. R M go play. Now the students are going to talk. So here, what happens is that all the three I am buying from a supplier. When I want to receive on the raw material stores, what I have to do is first of all I have to define it in the master. The picture tube, the motherboard, and then the monitor cover has to be defined in the master, and then it has to be assigned. <laughs> then I perform an interop transfer and then bring it to the manufacturing arm. To bring it to the manufacturing arm, they have to be assigned to this place. And then what happens? I am going to manufacture the monitor in the manufacturing arm. So for which what happens? The monitor has to be defined in the master, and then it has to be assigned to the arm. And then finally, what happens? I perform an intro transfer and then bring it to the warehouse. The monitor and monitor cover are coming from there. What happens? It's going to ship to this place. The monitor cover is moved from 012 to 014 directly because what happens? There is no need for us to move it to 013 at all. So nothing is being done on this. Are you able to understand this business now? Now. Inventory or here is a pointer. It will now point to only one inventory or, and then this is basically an eligibility criteria. So items in that org are eligible for a purchase basically. 
it doesn't mean that what happens the item can be purchased item becomes eligible but again what happens the purchased is an item defining attribute and then purchasable is a status attribute if these two attributes are not on we cannot purchase it even if it becomes eligible like what happens if you have a passport can you go to usa you cannot you need a visa also so one if the visa is there then only automatically can do it. so passport come visa likewise what happens the eligibility criteria plus the purchased and then the purchasable attributes the item defining attributes and status attributes must be on then only what happens we can put it on the requisition or the purchase so this eligibility criteria we are talking about the first condition now you can now see the scenarios there are plenty of scenarios will be available now you see raw materials are only purchasable scenario one is saying fgs should not be purchased suppose if you start to buy the fgs what will happen uh, the company <clears throat> what happens they will be buying it from the market as the inferior quality and then they will not bring it and then they will not sell, sell, ship it also so the customer will be getting a good product from you as well as what happens some inferior also will be getting it so the the company sometimes what happens will not strictly say do not buy fgs you buy only raw materials so your inventory org is a pointer it has to point to one of the orgs 011 012 013 014 014 tell me for the scenario one where it has to point to it has to point to which which org what he says is what only raw materials are purchasable finished goods should not be purchased right in tell me in which org finished good is not there 012 is 100% correct 012 has got only raw materials is not having finished goods so these will be point with scenario 2 the plant is under construction buy finished goods only and then sell it to the customer because what happens the manufacturing has not started right in which case what happens raw materials are not purchasable tell me which org do not have the raw materials at all the third one there is 014 014 do not have a raw material if this is a scenario what happens you will not put it down the scenario 3 is a common scenario buy raw materials if the customer needs cannot be fulfilled in time buy the finished goods also so everything has to become purchasable now tell me which org has got all the items actually yeah 011 012 013 014 what is the answer huh 014 is not having all the items 11 is the correct that has got all the items so i have depicted three scenarios depending upon different different scenarios what happens you may have to choose different orgs and then this is a dynamic one it will know this month what happens is 012 next month it will be 013 3 likewise what happens this will not change actually and tell me just because it is eligible is it can i purchase the item or not no it has to be what purchased and purchasable attribute on the item attribute also must be on Sir, so, uh, the scenario three, that you make customer, uh, customer is not satisfied for the time. Mm -hmm. Why finish it? Yeah. So, can you change the scenario every time? That's not the thing, na. This today is the scenario. Tomorrow, scenario two. Day after tomorrow, scenario one. Whenever the scenario changes, you will not change the pointer. What is the item? That is already gone. Whatever is already purchased is okay. From that time onwards, it is not retrospective. It is prospective. Right. From that time onwards, the eligibility criteria changes. it changes it is it is very much changeable so when as and when you change it from that time onwards it doesn't become eligible or it becomes eligible and not retrospective retrospective means what order purchase order is already gone gone yesterday you made a purchase order is gone the item is already purchased now today it is not eligible for purchase item is same item is same and everything is the scenario has changed and how the entry or it becomes eligible for putting it on the place basically on the purchase order it becomes easy item will not be coming in the list of values at all that's it okay so this is what is called inventory org in financial auctions this is same in order management also in order management it is known as what anybody this field is known as what in order management so what do you call this field as such this inventory org field is known as what anybody here in purchasing we call this as the inventory or in order management what we call it it's called item validation organization so it is the same thing right? there it's called item validation organization here it is inventory or so the functionality is same basically item validation organization or inventory or so normally what happens we will be putting only our master or g01 and give a tag we will be putting our master or give a tag and then drop it down I don't know. Choose search. Yeah. 
the name of the GitHub search now. So I will not put the master. Master all means what? Everything becomes eligible for a purchase. If at all, the customer, your customer is now giving you certain such, what happens, restrictions on this now. Everything becomes eligible for a purchase. If these restrictions are given by your customer, generally what happens? The change of the scenario for the eligibility criteria will come into picture. Otherwise, what happens? 99% of your implementation, or even I will not say 100% of your implementation, you are not going to the master. Both in order management as IBO as well as inventory org in purchasing will be having the master. Very rarely you'll be doing it. Right? There are certain conditions. We have seen some customers who are asking for different eligibility criteria that we have seen now. So accordingly, it will not work. Got enough? Right? Line type always put as goods now. Right? It is an enhanced one when compared to EBS now. Currency is USD. So the preferred language is what? American English. And that's it. This is for supplier qualification. Is a purchasing one. Mango that. So the maximum file size in megabytes, if it is going to be what happens, 15 or 50, then what happens, it will be going as a zip file. And then if it's going to be a zero, it will not go as a PDF file. It's same as EBS now. In EBS also, we have the same concept now. It's the same as EBS now. Mango that. Put it zero. So the zip close tolerance and other things, we will not be discussing it because it's again a full fledged purchasing only. We'll be discussing it now. So here we are now doing a skeleton setup of this now. Mango that. This if I get on save and close, by which what happens, it is now getting completed. So we have completed what? The, con the common options, configure requisitioning business function, and then configure procurement business function as such. And this much we have configured. Go there. We go further now. No space. Now, next is what? The manage item class. Now, <coughs> You're going to go and then write an examination. So what are the what are the activity you do? You have to go and then get the hall ticket. Fine. So if you have the hall ticket, can you pass the exam? No. What do you do? Huh? No pen is okay. You have to study. You have to study the subject. Fine. Subject you have to study now. Fine. You have to study the subject, or otherwise what happens? You must have a bit in your place, or what happens through your what happens? Your this thing, your girlfriend will be giving you the answers. This by some means or other, the data has to flow. If the data doesn't flow, what happens? You cannot pass. So that concept has been brought over here now. So the function security is basically a sort of a, what happens? The eligibility criteria. The data security is basically what? The data must be enabled actually. The data must be enabled. Then only what happens? We can create an item. An item creation has been made more complex over here now. I don't know why they have done it like this now. The emails is not so. We don't have the function security data security. So for which what happens? We have to go to the manage data, uh, manage item class and then create the item concept. So we are now see, but how we cannot create an item. Now we cannot create an item. So if you go and then click on the home icon now. We will not be in a position to create an item. Go there. So what happens? I am now in A02. So let me go out and then log out and then log in with mine now. So here again, what happens? We have to give the data access and other things. Uh, in A02, I have already given the data access, so I'm using it now. Fine, that. So uh, we have to give certain data access and all that. I will be coming to it a bit later. Now, fine, let us now uh, work on this itself on the minute. Fine, and go there. I will now go to what? I will now go to the product management, and then I go to the product information management. Now, fine, that. Product information management. So let me go on and try to create an item. I will not be able to do it. Now, fine, click on it now. So let me go on and create an item. Fine, click on create now. So I cannot create an item at all. So I will not put the organization what G01 and then zero. Remember, items can be created only on the master org and not on the child org. So if you go and then try to put the class root, and then what happens? It will be it's coming actually fine. Go zero G010. It will not normally come actually fine. This will not come at all fine because what happens? The function security and data security has not been done at all. It will not come at all. See, actually, nothing is coming actually. Even though the class is coming, what happens? The templates and other things are not coming. Fine. It will not done. So we have to set up the item class. Then only what happens, we will be in a position to what happens to create an item actually. So let us go on and set up the class. I will now go on and set up the class. So I go to the setup and maintenance now. So click on the setup and maintenance. And then go to manage item class. Click on it. And then go to search. And then go to manage item class. Manage percentage. Item percentage. Class percentage. Manage item class. So manage item class is the navigation plan. Go there. In this task, we are going to set up. So let us not take the root item class now. Click on edit. Click on edit. 
so here what happens item creation is allowed if you are having a license for inventory what happens it becomes inventory comes in three licenses one is the product license one is the product and catalog license one is the product hub license the product and catalog and the product hub license are for a higher level right the basic license is product so if the license is obtained what happens the tick mark is becoming automatically you know otherwise it is not so the first check mark is what on the basic you have to check whether the item creation is allowed or not now you go to the item management now in the item management what happens they have now used what user defined way of number generation actually and then what happens your configure item is also there right? is is no is a, the configurator is also enabled over here and the configurator is also there. and then after the description is there and then there is no item request which is if you say put a tick mark on this now then what happens you will be uh, what happens you will be sending it for approval actually item creation needs an approval if i put a tick mark on this now if i put a tick mark on this item creation needs an approval so otherwise it's not a right so user defined is the best one now you go to the security when click on the security now so in the security what happens if you go there we have to add the function security first of all and give a plus no and remember this has to be done for every inventory or so i am not giving it now i will not make it as a product data stream and then give a tab so the moment you put the product they will receive it and then give a tab it will ask for multiple things and then choose the product data stream of your order Problem is your aura. Okay, no, okay, no. You choose this. If this screen doesn't come of aura, what happens? It will not work at all. Remember, it will not work at all. And then the organization, what happens? I'm going to put the word G zero one zero. And then give it that. So for the master org, I'm going to create it. No point with that. So click on save and close. Now. So by which what happens? No one. Save and close. So for the master org, what happens? We have done it. The function security has been done. Now. And go there. Now we will not give the data security for the org. And go there. Click on edit now. i'm not going to give a data security for this org so let me go there and then go to the security and then let me query for this org the org number is what g010 and then enter now i'm not going to query now i'm going to select it and then now what happens the actions you can now see the product data steward actions is available now you have to see along with the number basically if i'm along with the number it is basically available so here what happens you go to the actions and then go to the select and add i'm going to give a select and add click on select and add So here, what happens? There are plenty of data actions that are available. Try and click on search. So the ones when you make a search, what happens? We can now very well create what happens your uh, what happens your attribute on this one. Right? There are so many things which are coming up now. Now everything is now on the E of you. E. Somebody has modified it totally. Oh God! I don't know. Is going to work or not? Okay. Here, what happens? You all be having it now. So on the receiving group, we can do it now. on the item revision we can do it now on the sourcing there are 16 such tab regions in ebus fine right? so they all belong to this one you can go there all these things belong to this one so lead time management mp mp as mrp the inventory group the purchasing group the planning group etc etc all these things are coming up right so we have to allow the data creation in all these things basically so for which what happens by the side of actions there is a small dabba is there If you click on it, what happens? Everything gets selected on this by the actions, and then click on apply, and then click on OK. Now, and click on apply, and then click on OK. So by which what happens? Now the data security has been given for all. We are given the data security for all. So click on save and close. So we have given the what? The data security for both for the for the master or the function security and data security complete. Always give us save and close. In a similar fashion, what happens? You give it for what? The child or also. And go and click on edit now. For the child org also we are going to give it. Go to the security, and then here what happens? You give a plus now. You keep your cursor on the top now, and then click on plus now. Click on plus now. You go to this place, and then here what happens? Again, what happens? You write product data stream. Then give it up. So it's not coming. Go there. Click on it. Product data server the one who is all the mistake now. We are going to use even data. We are going to search now. We are getting it now. Fine. This has to come now. If it doesn't come, and then if you give a tab, and then if you keep on doing it, it will not work at all. Remember, Fine. this has to come now. So you choose the product data server of Vora, and then populate your child or Vora. 
is what the G011 the one you would have. And then click on save and close by which what happened? The function security for this org is now given. Now we had to go on and give the data security. Fine, click on it. No, click on it now. So we had to give the data security. So go to the security. And then here, what happens? We are going to give the data security. You go there. Query for your org G010, 010, 011, 011, now. Going to query now. So this one is coming. For which what happens? You're going to add the actions. Actions and then go to select and add. The data security for this org, we are adding it now. Fine, click on search now. It will show you all the possible ones who are there. By the side of the action, what happens? You select it. And then click on apply and then click on OK by which one happens more computer. So give a same and close one. So this exercise of function security and data security has to be done for each and every org. Every org has to be done. Whether it is a master or child, every org. So go there and then click on it. And then what happens? You go on there now. Then afterwards, what happens? You go to the life cycle phases and then insert the created life cycle phases over here. You go to the life cycle phases and then you get insert it now. So I will now add it now. So click on plus and then add it. So I will now say phase is what? G01. And then click on search now. This has to be added over here. Then only we can use it now. Remember. So in, in the production instance, what happens? You won't be having anything. Fine. You have to add it now. I'll give us save. In the production instance, nothing will be there. We have to create one life cycle production and then add it over here now. And remember, it has got everything to do only with the PIM module. But on inventory module, since it's a mandatory field, we have to populate now. Otherwise, what happens? Don't add it here. Now you go to the template, and then here what happens? I am now going to create a template for what? Both the purchasing as well as sales also. So let me query my the organization 000. 000 is basically a Seattle organization now. 000 is a Seattle organization. I go there and then query. So again, on which what happens? There are plenty of things are there. I will now query the purchased item template. P U R and then let me query. So we have one thing, and then what happens? I'm now going to copy this into my organization. So select the line, and then what happens? I have now made a query on this org 000 with the purchased one. Select it and then click on copy now. I'm going to make a copy. So click on copy now. So I am now copying it into my and go there. And then what happens here? You give a plus and then add it now. Click on plus and then I'm going to add it now. I click on plus and then I'll be adding it. So let me query my organization over there. G01 and then zero. So remember, templates are applied only on the master org and not on the child org. Now, click on apply and then click on done now. And click on okay. So by which what happens? Not done. Click on okay. So my template is now getting created now. And there it was. Now coming and zero zero. Let me go on and edit again. And click on edit now. And then here what happens? Let me make a change of this name. I will now say purchase and then sale template. I'm not going to have a common template for purchasing and sales of the borders. And then I will now keep that in the description also. And take and put the description also. And then I will now make it as a default now, set as a default. So that what happens, this will be used for all item creations actually. Right. So click on OK, maybe which one is awesome. And then let me set up this now. Go there. The units of uh, the value of the attribute user item type is not valid. Okay, goes okay. Uh, now what happens? What I have to do is I have to first of all set up everything and then save it now. Fine. No, nothing is set actually. And let me set up and then afterwards what happens? I'm not doing nothing. Anyhow, it has now put a default over here now. The purchase sale item template is also coming. Fine. This is also coming. Fine. Give us save now at this stage. You know, see that this is not getting saved. Let us now go on and then set up the values first. So here, what happens? The item status is active. Life cycle phase, you drop down and then choose yours. User item type is blank. You choose it and then choose one of them. Now. The value is item. Click on it. I will now say, uh, is a purchased item actually. You go down. And remember, this is only for information purposes. It doesn't have any functionality at all. This user item type do not have any functionality. And go there. It's only fine. I will now say finish words. Pack. Pack type, what happens? I will not say make it as a blank now. This is applicable only for manufacturing actually. The pack type is not applicable for other things. So always make the pack type as blank. Now you come back here. What happens? We have a, what's called the units of measures as each. This is the primary. And tracking units of measures is primary. Pricing is primary. Conversion is both. So we are given this now. At this stage, let us now give a save now. We'll not see whether it's getting saved or not. So this time it will not be having any errors now. And so what happens? The saving will now go smoothly. Now afterwards, what happens? You go to the specifications. We have 16 tab regions in EBS now. Fine. This has been reduced to seven actually. Now let us go to the manufacturing. Click on the manufacturing. I'm already in the manufacturing. Here what happens? You make the bomb type a standard. Fine. That's okay. Fine. Go there. 
the remaining don't touch anything at all is okay the inventory asset value makes it as a asset item actually if the asset value is going to be no it becomes an expense item actually it becomes an expense item no is asset item. so costing is enabled this is an item defining attribute and then this is a status attribute so they are not and then build in dip is a very important parameter and then make it as yes no just like in ebiz also whenever you are performing any back to back operation for which whatever the build in dip must be yes no in back to back operation so here also what is the same thing so whenever you make a back to back operation of sales what do you mean by back to back operation you buy and ship or you make and ship or you transfer and ship and there are three back to back operations so if you are shipping directly from your place for it doesn't matter but for a back to back operation if the build in whip is not yes it will not work and the very important the same as eve is also my orders this one you can do it now so it's not a afterwards what happens you go there and then go to the service oracle service will not take care of it now you're not doing anything at all you go to the inventory inventory what happens you see with that your item defining attribute and status attributes have been done properly i will not click on the inventory so you have the inventory so this item inventory item stockable transactable and reserveable this much is sufficient of the no lot control no no all these things will be seeing it only in a full training actually in a full training you will not see all this in one and then all the things will be explained fully in inventory training actually and then afterwards what happens you go to the physical attributes again what happens we are not worried about it the oracle transportation management will be using the weight and volume to a great extent actually and then go to the sales and order management in the sales and order management what happens the customer order which is an id is yes as well as the customer orders enabled which is the status attribute is just not going to that the back to back enabled is not yes this comes with a gop license right items if you have a gop license the global order promising license only what happens you can make it as yes whereas in ebus it's not so without a gop license itself you can very well perform the back to back operation in ebus right here it is not so so on an attribute on a, on a template don't enable it you go down and then the remaining is all okay the order management transaction is enabled as well as what happens the invoice is enabled actually and then what happens you go the shippable is also yes the shippable must be yes order management transaction must be enabled and then the invoicing must be enabled on the item attribute this on the sales and order and then go to the planning in the planning what happens if you go there go down and then if you see what happens it must be mrp planning as of now what happens mrp planning is the only planning which has come out the remaining planning are yet to come they are coming on the way so always make the planning method as mrp planning make the planning method as mrp planning. and then the purchasing what happens you give a list price and then that will be defaulting onto the space number here i will not give a list price on this one 1.5 and that's it fine so with which what happens we have completed the creation of a template actually this much is sufficient actually fine so you may even adjust the values based upon the client's requirement actually depending upon the client's requirement you may even adjust the template actually Otherwise, normally what happens? This much is sufficient. You are saving. Click on save, and then click on save and close. By which what happens? The templates get created. So, if you see the item class, it has got a lot of activity to be done. Now, it's not this place. If you go there, click on edit now. This place. What you have to do is first of all, you have to go and then see whether this is any problem. The last one, and then the item management. What happens? Always use a user defined one. And then no approvals required. On the security for each and every inventory, or add the function security as well as the data security over there. And then create a life cycle phase and then add it over, you know. And then afterwards, what happens? You go to the templates and then create your own template. The pages and attribute groups is only for what happens? Additional roles actually. The transactional attribute is the one which is used by PIM actually. The PIM model we are using now. And then here also, what happens? We can also use something on the basic model also. But what happens? I am still struggling on using it actually. So click on save and close. By which what happens? We are now completed the root item class. Now we are in a position to create an item file. We'll now go on and create an item file. Click on this file. Click on it. So click on what happens? Go go to the home icon, and then you go to the product management. So go to the product management, and then go to the product information management. I know that I am pumping so much of a stuff within such a short period. Actually, <laughs> we should not go at this speed. But what happens? <laughs> that is what they wanted. So I am now going at a very high speed. I know that. I'm helpless. We normally cover the slower speed. You know, the people people have to they will ask a lot of questions on these, but now it's not possible. Click on create now. Now what happens? You go there. I will now put my organization over here. Now I go there. It's a G zero one, and then the mass org will be coming up automatically over here. Now I go there. Mass org. The root item class will be coming. Find go there. Root root item class will be coming. Root item class. Now what happens? All these things are coming. The purchase template again. Again, available list is not coming. Find at least the purchase template is available. Find click on okay. There has been made as a default now. Now your warning is coming. Ignore the warning. It doesn't matter. Fine, go there. Click on OK. The warning message is coming. Create it. 
you can now see your active your production your finished goods and then if you go there and see your units of measures and then if you go to the specifications then see what happens all these specifications will be on the purchasing and then how about it we are given up this price of 1.5 and that is coming right so whatever you are given set up the template everything is not coming up now what you do is you go to the associations and then let us now associate to the child law it is equivalent to what assigning it to a child law and go to that go to the actions now you go to the actions and then what I'm sir that is coming on to me because item name is not doing that so let us go there g01 i will not say per sale item purchasing and sales item basically and then i have not given the item name and description fine because of which what happens i am unable to associate an or with go there for the description of that and now what happens you go there go to the actions now self nat will be coming uh, i don't know why it's not coming thank you that you can now is not because I, the arrow mark has to come down on this one you have to keep your cursor on the one and then go to the actions and then go to the self nat by which what happens will be associated now so it's a g011 with a child or not Selected and then choose the child or click on apply and then click on apply. So by which one I'm going to make a save. So click on save and close by which one of us our item creation is now complete. Your inventory org is now complete. This much of a work you have to do for item creation actually. So so much of a work now. Now what happens? You go and then query the item and click on it now. Do not go via manage items to query, but go via browse items to query. Browse items I'm going to use it for querying it now. So item is starting in G01 now. And then click on search now. You can now see item assigned to both the organizations are coming. And zero one G zero one zero as well as G zero one. This completes item creation actually. This completes the item creation. Now let us go there and then how about it? Now? I know that you will be mentally tired actually. I know that item creation is there. Now. When I go and then try to create a purchase order, now I'll not go to a requisition at all. Fine, you will be failing actually. We'll be beginning this activity tomorrow, so I will now go directly. And then what happens? Now the purchasing accounting has to be learned, and then what happens? It has to be set now. Then only what happens? We'll be in a position to what happens? Do this now. Right? So we will now begin the purchasing accounting tomorrow. With which what happens? We will now do this. You getting idea now? Ha. Like a hurricane. No? <laughs> Any doubts? Hello. That room. Anybody has got any doubts? Sir, uh, tell me. Sir, this item class. What we are using now? What is the difference between the item class and item template? What we use in EBS? Item. Uh, EBS. What happens? Sir? We have an item template only. We don't have any item class at all in EBS. What is the additional functionality on item class? What item the... class has got what happens? The five functionalities which I told you. you now, first of all, what happens? Whether item creation is allowed or not. In the security, we give the function security and data security. In the life cycle phases, what happens? We introduce the production, and then on the template, we create a template. Fine. Okay. This many activities we have done on the item class actually. So in fusion, this item class is the way we have to go. Yeah, yeah. The only item. way. Yeah, this is the only way by which what happens? We can get item. Okay. We cannot get item directly. Okay, sir. One more thing, we haven't uh, seen about the position. Uh, no, that will not be con converted in this training at all. Okay. So what I this training is only for a P2P setups as well as a O2C setups actually. Okay. I've been asked to complete everything in one day. Okay, sir. So two half days. I will not try to complete, but it may be even spilling to the third day also. Okay, sir. but uh, here also you will have position hierarchies, right? Yes, right. Of course. Here there are six methods of approval. Okay. Sir. What happens? We have a position hierarchy and then a supervisor hierarchy. There are only two methods, whereas in Fusion there are six methods. It's very well enhanced. And AME is built in. This. So AME is not separate actually. AME is built in actually. Is a built-in. All the functionalities, whatever you enjoy in EBS, can be very well done. And then there's even more things can be done in Fusion. Actually. Okay. Sir. Fusion's procurement is a really a very excellent enhancement when compared to EBS. Okay. Sir, one more thing is uh, uh, we are having something called a requisition business function and procurement business function. Yeah. Is this, uh, it is known as purchasing options in EBIS now. That's yeah, a good question. Now. question so the purchasing options in EBIS is known as requisitioning business function and then procurement business function. But not all the functionalities has come over here. Now. Even certain functionalities are yet to come actually. Okay. So not every functionality is coming. Even put together, both requisitioning business function plus procurement business function put together. Not all the functionalities has reached the fusion. Actually, there is coming. Okay, so 
then what is the purpose of having this life cycle phase sir life cycle phase will be used only in pim module pim but since it is a mandatory field what happens sir? we have to create one dummy life cycle phase and then attach it to your item class actually okay. otherwise what happens item creation is not possible okay pim itself uh, abbreviation sir what product? Uh, product information management is pim we also have a pim in ebis also fine it is almost similar to what we have in ebis that's a higher level license and then only when you wanted to create what happens approvals and all for item creation itself fine a batch of items can be created only when you have such a thing then only what happens you know go for a pim license very few customers will be going for a pim license okay 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 sir any other questions what's your name jayantar sir jayantan okay man okay so thanks this is this for today uh, okay man yeah good thank you sir that's fine okay so tomorrow at uh, between 3:50 to 3:30 i'll be here and then we'll continue on this thank you thank you hmm he's having the bell come on the bell i'm stopping the